Hey, Joe, have you checked out last week's episode of the Boston Sports Nerds podcast? Uh, no, you know what? I was, I was busy. I, I missed it. You know, all you got to do is subscribe. I tell you every week, just go on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, any app that you use to listen to podcasts, and just hit the subscribe button, and it'll go to your phone automatically. Listen, I have a data limit, and it's just... Listen, you know, it's not much. We it's condensed nicely. The audio quality is great. The service is so good; it instantly starts downloading the next episode the moment I subscribe. So I have to make sure that you know I pause the less important podcast so that the Boston sports nerds can download first. There is no such thing as a less important BS nerds podcast. So make sure you subscribe to it and catch every single episode, including hashtag Dave Speaks, the Hall of Fame edition, which will be coming soon, and every episode of the Boston Sports Nerds Weekly Podcast. Hold up! Aaron, Aaron, Aaron. My name is Dave. This is, this is Joe. Aaron. I listened to that podcast, and I was like, I am with him. That's really cool. And then Chris Humphrey's heart fouls, and Kevin Garnett pushes him straight into the third row. Let's go. My name is Dave. This is Joe. Let's go. This is the Boston Sports Nerds Podcast, the BS Nerd Show. Joe, you got anything you want to say before you go? No, we have talked a lot. We have talked a lot. Nothing left to the Let's go. Welcome back, everybody. This is the 22nd? 21st? 21st, I believe. 21st, 21st, 22nd episode of the Boston Sports Nerds Podcast. My name is Dave. Of course, I'm accompanied by my two fellow nerds here, Aaron and Joe. How are you gentlemen doing tonight? Good. Stupendous. All right. Good and stupendous. It's an underutilized word, I think. It is. It's not stupendous anymore. That's not, you know how you can find on Google, like, the word usage, like, throughout history? I didn't know this. You can, yeah, you can. That's a that's a little. Tidbit I don't think I, I don't think I type stupendous very often. Check out stupendous definition, and it'll tell you when it became popular and when it stopped. And it's gonna be like there's gonna be a day in between. It was each used of for three hours somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Aaron, what do you got going on, man? You're looking at me funny. <laughs> good, you good over there? Yeah, I'm listening. Check it out. So I don't know if you guys can notice, but Aaron and Joe have invested in some new microphones, so the quality sounds great. We sound good. Yeah, not, not as scratchy. To, not no. to pat your own back, huh? Not my. That, You're just patting our own backs. We're I'm patting just, our own I'm backs. Patting your backs for you because I'm proud of you guys. All right, <laughs> you're, you're you're along the nice diaphragm microphone train, and this sounds really good. I Dave's like Dave's just happy we've elevated to his level. You now. guys are here. <laughs> hey, welcome aboard. Uh, welcome, welcome to the nice mic. Um, <laughs> I don't have to edit out all that crap now. Yeah, no, there's no buzz. Everyone sounds. Oh, do you, do you guys miss the buzz? I could. Yeah, can you keep that going? Let's get that on loop. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, let's get right into the podcast with the rap session. Of course, the most important team playing right now is the Boston Celtics. They are tied two two. Playing a very pivotal game five tonight, actually. Uh, where do you guys stand with the series right now? And I know it's two zero oh two. And we did this last round. Yeah, it, we're, they're tied two two. But let's not forget that they went in up two zero. Up two zero. Right. So it's very disappointing. It's discouraging. They but can't I, seem to play in Washington. <laughs> they can't play in Washington, and these two teams have won the home game all year. That's so, true. So, and they say in the NBA there's a basketball mantra that where it's a playoff series doesn't start until someone wins a road game. Makes so, sense. right now, you're looking at it because someone's either going to have to win a road game. Well, the Celtics don't have to win a road game, but if the Wizards want to win the series, they have to win a road game. Yeah. So, their series starts tonight, really. I mean, best of three, you gotta you got to take one in Boston somewhere, either tonight or game seven if you're the Washington Wizards. So, I'm discouraged, but I'm not really because, like, Okay, Washington did what they were supposed to do. They won their home games. I but, never, I never feel bad about those. But the in the way that it happened, I was gonna say Washington just didn't good. just win their home no, games. No, right? They dominated. I mean, there. If you look at those runs that they've had, where it's like they had a sixteen nothing run in game one, nineteen nothing run in game two, yeah, twenty four in yeah. game three, and then twenty six in game four. Twenty six nothing. That is unworldly. Like that is crazy. That's a whole quarter average scoring because the average team scores about 100 points in a game which means that each quarter each scored about 25 26 points they did that basically they played a quarter and the celtics didn't score yeah or for the equivalent of 12 paced out minutes which is just ridiculous so they need some help isaiah thomas didn't get to the free throw line in game four and he only had i think 12 shot attempts i feel horrible i might have jinxed isaiah 
You're right. Because I did say that right. after get out. The, the, the get out of, <laughs> get out of your house. <laughs> the two O start. Everybody, I was like, do you think he's going to come down from this? Yeah. You know, he, well, he's shooting thing, lights out. The answer is yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. To Monday quarterback that situation. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I would say that the Wizards made some really nice adjustments. They've put Bradley Beal on Isaiah Thomas. So when he has to play defense, uh, Bradley Beal started to heat up finally for the Wizards, which is bad news for the Celtics, big time. And he got hot. And in the water's wet segment of the week, Isaiah Thomas is not a good defender. So now that Isaiah is matched up with Bradley Beal, I'm not surprised that Beal's playing well. I'm off the Celtics. They lose in six. Really? Yeah. What if they win tonight? I don't think they're going to. I think the Wizards are on. Okay, so, I think so if the Celtics win tonight, then what? If the Celtics win tonight, they win in seven. Okay, that's fair. But if they lose tonight, they're where, down in six. Where are you at? Down in six, huh? Oh. I, I think there's no coming back. They're definitely not. If they lose tonight, they're definitely not winning in in Washington. Not after the performances I saw. They beat Chicago twice at home. Yeah, but without Rondo. You still think that seri- oh, yeah, You still yeah, think yeah, they yeah. win that yeah, series yeah, if yeah. Rondo plays the that's whole a, thing? Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. I was shocked that they won the first two games because I thought this team does not match up well with the Wizards. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, we, yeah, we definitely did. So, that. yeah, what do you have? I, I think it's going to go seven. It's yeah. going to be Boston, Boston, but seven. like it's going to be a squeaker. I'm going to go bold prediction: Celtics and six. And they win the next two. Yeah, win tonight. They're going to be home. They'll win tonight. Isaiah Thomas will get like 15 free throw attempts at least because he didn't get any last game. So he'll get the superstar treatment in Boston. And then I think that they're just going to roll. Someone, they got to get hot again because they can't all be that bad for this long. again. Now you can't do that for four games. Someone, uh, Avery Bradley, Jay Crowder, someone's going to light fire and score 20 points. I don't know. They just look so bad. It's Maybe it's they recency bias. Bad. They've just looked but awful. But the thing is, is that they looked really good in Game 4 until that run. A 26-point right, run, which is though. bad. But, that's, I mean, they, they had a four-point lead. almost unheard of. No, that's it. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. But they had a four-point lead going into the half. I think they hit, like, a, a bucket right before to close it down to two points or one point or something. But, I mean, they had the lead in Washington going into halftime. Isn't there, like, he had to have called a timeout, right? Called one. He didn't want to burn all the second half timeouts. On, but on that's one like, run. how do you just let that happen? You would think after like you, if you eight back, oh run, you call a timeout. I think I think when it got to eleven, he called one, and then around twenty, it was like you got to call another one. But then it sort of was like, well, what's the point? You know it's got to be ending soon. If, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, eventually, like something's going to break, and you don't want to only have two timeouts for the fourth quarter. Yeah, I guess. because if you do get it close, you're going to need that time. You know what I mean? So. Um, we'll see. I, I I think Celtics in six. I'm I'm an optimist, of course. Like whatever. I, I I'm always that guy. It's like oh, yeah, we're gonna win. The, we're gonna win the championship. Remember, I'm also the same guy that said if we get past Cleveland, we beat the Warriors in the finals, and that's crazy. <laughs> that's yeah. crazy talk, <laughs> especially with the way the Warriors and Cleveland have been playing. Right. Yeah, that's true. Um, so we'll see what happens there. But with the Patriots now, which is I am so confused. Like I am, I am befuddled and ruined right now because I, I don't know what they're doing. I think I have an idea. I think I know what they're doing. Okay, just so, to, just to catch everyone up, they've signed every running back in the world, right? Except for Adrian Peterson, right? And uh, your Jam- buddy there, Jamal Charles. Jamal Charles. But everyone else is a New England Patriot. And then they just said, "Hey, Legarrette, you're still ours." Unless she signed somewhere else, and they and they brought in Christy and Michael for a workout. Right. All right. So this is what they're doing. Legarrette Blunt, bigger back. Yes. You would say that, right? Yeah. Right. Christine Michael, kind of a power running back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, strong. Yeah. Strong. Yeah. Uh, Gillis Lee, good all around back. Uh, Burkhead, receiving back. James White, receiving back. Dion Lewis, receiving back. Right. Bolden. Special teams, whatever. Right, yeah. So, bold, uh, blunt, offensive lineman. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Christine Michael, offensive lineman. Right. They left, just need to f- guard, they need right. to flesh out the offensive line. They're going to have James White at one wide receiver. Yeah. They have Rex Burkhead at the other. Deion Lewis is going to be a slot guy. Yeah. Then they're going to have uh, 
Bolden play tight end. Yeah, and then Gillisley be the actual And Gillisley's going to be the actual running back. Ten running backs, Tom Brady. Unheard of offense. No one's going to know what to do. That's true. I don't know. I mean, maybe. <laughs> like, who knows? That could be true. No, they're going to uh, cut most of these guys before the season. Yeah, I'm going to say. I, yeah, but not, where, But I think it's stupid. Why bring all them in? Are they going to bring who in. Who cut? Burkhead? Because they're paying him like a starter. I th- Lee? I they think, gave up a pick and money. I think it's going to be Lewis. I think he's the odd Lewis man Lewis is cut. Out of the, Lewis out of the, has got to be traded. Or, yeah, or traded. He's got to be traded. I think that's what they're going to do with him and Blunt. Do you guys know D'Angelo Williams is still a free agent? Right. Yeah, we were talking about that the other day. I'm surprised the Patriots haven't brought him in. They will. I'm surprised the, the will. I'm surprised the Lions haven't brought him in. Yeah, really. Or the Eagles. I saw something today about how uh, Nick Mangle thinks that it would be very hard for him to come in and play for the Patriots. Really? It would not be a comfortable situation for him. Hmm. I don't think he would start. I think they like that. David, I think they like David Andrews. David Andrews. It's, yeah, yeah, no, I'm not even like saying that. That's weird. What, how are you that fucking stupid yeah. to not want to play for the team that's kicked your ass for yeah, the past? Yeah, I, I don't know. Years? I don't I really like jewelry. Like, that's what he's saying. I don't yeah. really like jewelry. Yeah. I don't need any more rings. Yeah. Any yeah, rings. You, you don't need any rings. Yeah, right. Any rings. <laughs> I guess it's like, I respect a man that knows his limits. Like, it's like, almost like Ochocinco coming in and dying, or like Reggie Wayne. I do uh, Yeah, but do you want to be as fun? Huh? The oh, John safety. Lynch. And John, Lynch. John Lynch. It was just like I'm not gonna be able to do this. So right. cut me. Let me Reg- play. Reggie Wayne was even like, "This isn't fun." Yeah, I thought I thought I was gonna win a Super Bowl and it'd be a great time. This is fucking hard work. Well, that's what, was like, have I'm you, out. Have you heard the? Uh, I heard an interview with Chris Long. Yeah, where he, that's pretty much what he said. Like, mm. I loved it there. Whatever. It wasn't fun. Right. It was like, it's tough. it's work. Yeah, it's all work. It really you know what I mean? Everyone it's, thinks that it's just like, oh, you wear the, wear the laundry, become a champion. Yeah. It's like, no, those guys prepare. When they talk about like mental preparation and and get, you know uh, what they call it, game situations or whatever, like that team is so well coached. It's crazy. That's not you don't go there and like, yeah, you know, I want to play pass rushing defensive end. Right. And that's all I want to do. I just want to come in on pass rushing downs. I only want to get sacks. Right. Bill's gonna look at you be like, nah, you're gonna play oh, yeah, defensive you can, tackle today. Because yeah, you, you fit you fit your good matchup. Right. We're gonna have you play outside linebacker, maybe do a little bit of coverage because mm-hmm. that's the game plan. Yeah. No, I don't want. No, I don't care what you want to do. That's what yeah, you're going to no, do. That's, that's it's not up to you. Hi, no. you're running back. You're playing offensive line. But my <laughs> whole my whole point was: Do you not want you want to be the least successful out of your siblings? Like I your guess. sister went on to like compete in the Olympics in the weightlifting competition. Mm-hmm. Your sister's more successful, yeah. than you are. Well, I don't know about that. I mean, he did have like a really good NFL. Yeah, he's an, he's he an did. Pro but how many? How many? How many Super Bowls did he make? Well, that depends. Is that how you judge a good NFL career? I, I, I think, think it, I, th- formula, I think though. I think if you're gonna like sit there and kind of say, "Hey, I don't want to go there because they're the Patriots," you're an idiot. Like you don't want that experience. I don't think out the of Patriots your... want him. Maybe he's just no, 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 no. But that, yeah, yeah no, though, obviously. Yeah. Maybe but... he's trying to reverse psychology, Bill Belichick. Like, I don't <laughs> yeah, really want to him. go there. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a that is a good question that always comes up. Like, how do you grade a great career? Or you know, I mean, like, what makes someone the greatest of all time? I think he's safe because he's not a running back. I don't think he has to worry about coming here. Yeah, that's it. if you're not a running back, you're not getting looked at by the New England Patriots right now. Um, yeah, but, yeah, don't no, don't, don't get any pass rushers or anything like that. Just just sign they're more they're running backs. Good. I think they're good. They though, bring Dave. in. I don't think they have a hole. They bring in Kristen Michael. Do you think they need a pass rusher? I think that they're crazy if they think these rookies are going to be. What about starters? What about no? They'll no, get not, a, not. they'll get good rush. They'll have they're, they're going to get a Patriots pass rush, which they've always had. Yeah, they're going to get is nothing. They're going to get decent rush from Coney Ely and uh, Flowers. Yep. Well, I'm excited about Ely, but that real, he's one pass rusher. He's also not a pass rusher. I think he's averaged the most five sacks as the most he's had. Yeah, in, Coney, in season. and then there's also Lorenzo guy, but he's more of a run stuff in the end, like three four DN. But Ninkovic is going to have Ninkovic you know, will have six. however many sacks. He'll have six or seven. Hightower will have six or seven. Flowers like is going to be a beast. That's the guy. Trey Flowers. It, I think Butler, you're really good Malcolm shape. Brown, Malcolm Brown, not Malcolm, Malcolm Brown. Butler. Yeah. yeah, he'll be fine up the middle. I think they're going to be. I think they were good. Their defensive Not line's sure. good. Uh, they got Hightower is going to have some sacks. They got rid of Jamie Collins, their best pass rusher last year, right? 
if you want to call Jamie Collins I mean, a like pass he was, rusher. He was able, the most athletic guy to get to. I actually think Hightower is a better pass rusher than Jamie I think Collins. He's, I think he's a smarter blitzer. I think, I don't think, I think on third down, he should always rush the pass. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I he should cover that. ever. I think he should blitz I agree every time. But I think they had a pretty good pass rush last year. They're not good. I wouldn't say good. The thing is, they don't even need to have a great pass rush this year because it's going to be locked down. So good. Locked down. Their secondary is going to be loaded. It's gonna be so I thought they were going to bring in his uh, college teammate, Upshaw, in the offseason. Yeah. There was yeah. a possibility. I was like, oh, that could be cool. Also, wait till a cut day. That's when Bill really strikes. Oh, yeah. The no, snake, he'll, he'll pick up somebody yeah. right around there. Yeah, so because people cut steps. people, good players, just cap space. I'll never forget when they brought in Pro Bowler Brian Waters. Yeah. Just, you know, yeah. Like, like, wow, what a um, steal. Like, that was awesome. They signed, They brought in Kristen Michael for a workout. They extend the thing to Garrett Blunt to add to their – 800 running backs they have yeah. still have not tried to sign the McCordy brother. Yeah. What is that? Do you I think they've, know. and I think this kind of goes along the lines of not, I don't want to say it's Brett Favre esque, but you, they've talked to him. Obviously, his twin brother, they share the Twitter account together and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They share shit. They talk all the time. Do you think that they talk to him? He's like, yeah, hey, I'll hang around. If I get a better deal, I'll take it. But if not, I'll come in at the end of right, training. Yeah, I'll come in, you know, during preseason. Like a handshake deal? They, they, yeah, they yeah, work out those deals all the time. Type like deal Junior where Seattle he doesn't have to come in the, for the postseason workouts if he doesn't want to. Like, he, right. hey, guys, I have some stuff I have to take care of down in Tennessee. Right, right. Then I'll come up. I think yeah. they might actually just like their defensive backs, too. They, yeah, they might. True. I think, they're, I think Bill is still high on Cyrus Jones. Yes, that's true. Yeah. He didn't he take a corner. He lost nope. his number. He did lose his number, but Bill didn't take a corner. He had four picks. Didn't mm-hmm. take a corner. Right. They did sign that undrafted guy, though. Who was supposed to be nasty. Really good. Yeah, yeah. And that's safety, too. I'm safety. excited for all. I'm excited for some of the guys they've brought in. I think, if I they think even make the team. Yeah. Some I think of these guys aren't going to make the their team. Their third round pick, Derek, whatever it is, Waters? No. Um, I can't remember his last name. Uh, Why are you doing this? Why are you doing right, this? I always, right I always, I always um. The third Derek round something. Pick. Yeah, Rivers? Derek. Derek Rivers. Not Waters Rivers. Um, Close. Bodies rivers are made. Yeah, rivers are made with Waters. Right. And uh, so, yeah, Derek Rivers, uh, I think he's going to be really good. I think he's too small. He's, well, he's going to be a small, pass rusher, though. though. That's yeah. what you want. Right. No, I, well, my point is I think he's too tiny. Like, size-wise, if you look at his, like, size, he's six not that four. big. I mean, he's not like. He's 6'4", like 250. He's 250. Fast, though. Yeah. He's yeah, quick. He's like, Hopefully. I would look at, like, I, I don't know the numbers off the top of my head. I could be completely wrong about this, but, like, how big is Von Miller? He's lean. No, he is not lean. Le- Von Miller's not a big He's guy. not big. He's no, not I'm big. talking about, I'm talking about like, he's, like, it, James Harrison kind of fat, like, thickness. James Harrison's thick. No, so James I, Harrison's no, bigger but that's than Von what Miller. Von Miller, yeah, but Von, Von Miller is thick. Not like he's James fast. Harrison. He's Von Miller no, is I know, fast. No, I know, but I know, but I'm saying is he has he's a, a little, lot of... It's a lot of quick. We aren't comparing. Yeah, he's, yeah we aren't yeah. comparing Derek Rivers to Von Miller. No, <laughs> well, let's do it. Yeah, why not? <laughs> so no, let's go down that road. I'm not even comparing. Bold prediction. <laughs> Derek Rivers I'm not even comparing more sacks him. than Von Miller. This year. I'm not even comparing That's, him to Von Miller. To probably Harrison. getting popped for PEDs. Then That's um, the only way that happens. Yeah. <laughs> um, I I don't know. I'm just I'm trying to think of guys like that, like the the real outside linebacker. He's going to be a situational passer. Yeah, he yeah. He's not going to expect that, it. He's not going to have a huge role. Collins wasn't that, wasn't big. No, he but was he was small. also not expected to be an outside linebacker. He was the middle linebacker. Yeah. I think he got drafted. He was, he was more, outside. Outside. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. was, but he was more of a coverage yeah, yeah. linebacker versus... I mean, that's, it, true. that's true. I don't think you should expect this kid to have double-digit sacks, but no, he's no, going to no. contribute. Well, he's going to be a third down... Yeah, but I think he could be. Right? I think he could be like one of those players that they drafted like three or four years ago, where they draft him and like a year later he's gone. We never see him again. Yeah, he never turns or out to be, be anything. Trey Flowers too. I think Trey Flowers is going to have a monster year. And they took that other kid. The other kid they got uh, later in the draft was also from Arkansas. Yeah, but he's another one that like he's he, he's a little bit thicker, but he's he's like six. I think want to say he was like six six, mm-hmm. and he was like two seventy eight or something like that. That's not bad, but that's mm-hmm. that's a that's a three it's a three four D end. Yeah, yeah, right. Their defense is going to be great. Fifteen and one. Joe's prediction: fifteen and one. Only loss to the Raiders in Mexico City. That game is rigged. All right, you heard it here first. Those refs do not want to <laughs> die. Yeah, you're probably right about yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. 
Those refs do not want to die. And you know that's a home game for the Pats? Which pisses me off. I went on a whole rant about this once on the old podcast I used to do about when you have to go to London and you lose a home game. Fuck you. How is like, how is ridiculous. Mexico City home for the Pats? Like how is how is anything not your home your home game? Like that's If anything bullshit. that's definitely a Raiders home game. Yeah, it definitely should be. Hey, they're going to be right. in Las Vegas, way closer to Mexico City right. than New England is. Right. Well, even even Oakland, Oakland, yeah, yeah, Oakland, even Oakland. If you ever watch videos of them like they're they're around their stadium and stuff, they have huge amounts of Latino fans. Right. Yeah, they, yeah, they have a huge Latino fans. So yeah, right, you don't right. think no. Anybody that there that do you guys remember though? You guys remember the last Mexico City game? There was the big like mobbing there, right? It was Oakland. Yeah, played right, they dude. The Houston, whole stadium, right? the whole stadium was Oakland right. fans. Yeah. That place went nuts, the, and yeah. Houston got no penalty calls like right. go their way because the refs are like, yeah, we're not trying to get Screw beheaded. Yeah. yeah, that's what happens in these Mexican soccer stadiums. Um. Yeah. I fucking. That's a whole. I could do a whole Dave speaks about fucking home games not being at home. That's fucking bullshit. I hate that so much. That's fucking. Just put a team in London. Whatever. Or don't. Just don't go. Don't go to Mexico City. Just don't do it. Like I understand trying to expand the game, and David Stern was a huge part of that for the NBA, like making it a worldwide thing. But he didn't do it while taking the fucking Boston Celtics or Los Angeles Lakers and making them play in fucking Europe somewhere, and. Say, oh, that's your home court for the finals or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, you're these and that's a big Raiders. game against right. the Raiders. That's like a that's top probably, eight. That's, that's the second one, team. That's number one seed yeah. implications. But, in that but game. what was it you just said? Soccer. They're not – they don't give a shit about football in Mexico. Yeah, yeah but you're that. trying to make them give yeah. a shit. That's why the Raiders yeah, have been there twice. Doesn't do anything. The right. Raiders have been that, there twice and they're going to be in Vegas. Okay, I at least can see Mexico because at least we fucking touch them. Right. London? Right. London's Nobody fun. in England gives a shit. No, but they do. They show up for those games. They fucking love it. You I'm know, a, you you know the team's I'm, big. No, check the you're, attendance. I, I'm telling you you're losing money playing those games. No, 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 no. They're not. They wouldn't keep doing it. You know what team? They're not. You know what team's big in London? They lose money. New what England. New right. England sells yeah, out every right. time they're in London. Yeah. Although Jaguars are going to be the team. That stadium is huge. They make so much money on that game. I don't think you'll ever have a team in London, though. I don't, I don't think, think so it's either. ever going to happen. It doesn't make any logistically, sense. Logistically, logistically, doesn't make you'll have any a team sense. In, you'll have a team in Mexico City before you have a team in they London. They should create NFL Europe, plug it on the NFL Network, play it in the offseason, and then you could have another spring team league? there. Like a spring league, right. That's I what would they love do. a spring league. That's what they should do. And it should be if I can play fantasy football, football year-round. Right. That's what in. they should do. That's what the NBA did, whether they're the FIBA Cop- league. Copyright it now, Joe. Yeah, they had it. Vincent Man or Donald Trump fucked it all up. it up, yeah. Um... That's what they should do. They just do NFL Europe, make it a, a sub project. Like you know, what I mean, that's yeah. it. fucking congratulations NFL. Now you don't have to worry about sending the fucking Jaguars and Patriots to the fucking Wimbledon. This is so annoying. Um, God, that that really worked me out. Take there, the over, right? by the way, everyone. Yeah, the over is set according to. Uh, it opened at eleven wins for the Patriots and is now at twelve and a half. Twelve and a half. Twelve and a half. And you said that what company still has it at, at Bro, eleven? No, I. I think I just saw the open. Oh, number. the open line. Okay, yeah. So, so it's now 12 it's twelve point five. Still take it. Yeah, That's take the it. Safest bet. Of take the, the over. I will take that over faster than I take the over in the Pro Bowl. You know the Browns are projected five wins. That's what the over under set at. I'll take. Oh, that's actually I'd t- pretty. I'd that's pretty take good the bet. over on that one. Yeah, you think so? I take the over. Five's on that a one. tough one. I think the Jets are projected five wins. That's I'm taking the under on that. Yeah, they don't have a quarterback. They have. Yeah. Uh, uh, the dude who used to play for the Browns, um, the older Brandon, guy, Brandon Whedon. Nope. No. Um, came from New England, right? Originally. Uh, I don't think so. Oh, Brian Hoyer. Nope. Brian Hoyer's in for in San Francisco. Right. You're right. Um. Yeah, I don't know who the Jets quarterback is. But doesn't really matter. It doesn't he's matter. Not good. Yeah, they don't have a quarterback. obviously. If we don't know, his he name, is but... good. He is a decent. He's an okay. No, he's not really even an okay quarterback. He's been in the league a long time. He gets hurt all the fucking time. He's gonna get hurt, and then they're they're gonna be awful. Yeah. I think they win two games. Worst team in the NFL, the Jets. The Jets. They have no offensive. The Bears. At all. Oh, actually, have you guys seen the Bears? Have you guys seen the Bears schedule? It's tough. The first eight games up to the bye week that they have, 
They're literally all losses. There's there there's almost no way that they win. What I love is that they'll probably wind <laughs> up with like the worst or second worst record and then owe oh, the Niners that pick. Cutler took a deal with Fox. Did he? I think to be an analyst. Yes. Oh, he took a deal. God. He took a deal. He's to not coming analyst. back. Yeah. That was my Jets prediction. He just wants to uh smoke cigarettes and Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I mean he 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 got a girl from the hills pregnant. Yeah. And now he's happy. He's, he's good to go. He outkicked his coverage on that. Kristen Cavallari. Yeah. He definitely outkicked his coverage. Yeah, no, I'm just saying like he Yeah. No, I, yeah, I'm whatever he's content. He, I really thought that he, he wants would to be smoke cigarettes and take butt shots. That's what he do, that's what he wants to do. He wants to take pictures with his ass showing and yep. smoke cigarettes. Yep. Talk maybe about football a little bit <laughs> somewhere where there's time. Well, he also would he went to Vanderbilt, right? Like so, I don't know. I'm pretty sure he went to Vanderbilt. So he, yeah, he did because isn't that like that's uh, Skip Bayless loves Skip it Bayless. Yeah, he always he brags about it because yeah. he went to Vanderbilt. Not oh, Jesus. And uh, you see, Tony Romo tried to qualify for the PGA Tour. Did he? Yeah, he missed it by like three strokes. Yeah, wow. no, I heard he's he no golf. slouch off the in the golf. He tried to qualify. I think he shot like a three over and missed it. Oh, no shit! Wow, that'd be interesting if he could chase. Yeah, I always heard. I always heard Smoltz. I always heard Smoltz could make it, could make a PGA tour if you wow, wanted. It's to the do greatest it. job ever. Why would you not want to be on the PGA tour? Yeah, really. Like, that's amazing. I'm I mean, going to fly around the world to play all the most beautiful think, golf courses. Right. Think about it. If you were on tour with Tiger back in the day, all the fucking broads you'd be nailing, mm-hmm. oh, my God. No, just no. shack up with Ricky Fowler and freaking uh, – Oh, and Daly? I'd want to hang out with Daly. Yeah. Just party yeah, with that man. He just won for the first time in like 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> I'd want to party with that guy. He's like the Anna Kornikova of golf. Yeah, he, he's just famous, and he's not even that good. That's true. He's actually pretty good. He's just he won one Masters, and then he hasn't won a tournament for fifteen years. Just won again. That's awesome. That's he has nice. his own. He has his own like tequila. He's and my beer. hero. He's D- my D- hero. D- you D- get D- an guy. alcoholic. If you get an alcoholic, uh, uh, let's try this again. If that you get an alcoholic Arnold Palmer, they call it a John Daly. Really? Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> that's cool. I'm, I'm gonna get that. Yeah, next time I go, they out. are good. Yeah, uh, you know who's still not good. The Boston Red Sox. They are so out of whack. They are the epitome of average. Yeah. That's they're, true. they're hard to watch. They're, they they need a third baseman that can hit. What's yeah. really hard to watch is the fact that the Yankees are just balling out of control right of now. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, well, they, right. they've hit lightning in a bottle with that kid, uh, yeah, Aaron. Yeah. Uh, He's bigger than Gronk. Yeah. No. Yeah. We were talking. No. We, yeah. No. We were talking about it. He was size-wise. He's bigger than uh, uh, Garrett Miles. Yeah, yeah. Oh. he's bigger than Garrett Miles. Right, that's what it was because it was like the defensive the draft. end. The yeah. defensive end just got drafted Miles, number one. Yeah. Miles, Garrett. Miles, Miles Garrett. Garrett. Sorry. sorry, yeah, Miles Garrett. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, um, yeah, it's bigger than Miles Garrett, which is crazy. Uh, the Red Sox have the worst timely hitting I've seen in a long stretch yeah. of baseball. Chris Sale, most dominant pitcher in Major League Baseball right now. He's going to go out. He's going to pitch a shutout. Well, not a shutout. He's going to pitch a great game. Give up like one run. Yep. Sox don't hit. They lose the game. Right. Then he goes out there. Then they go out there. First inning. Sox score four runs. Chris Sale goes out there. Fuck your four runs. I'm going to give him up. Gives up four runs. They ended up winning that game like 17 to 8 or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they had, uh, in one of the innings, they scored eight runs in that inning. Seven of them were unearned. (laughs) There was was an out or there was an error with two outs. So everything after that. Jesus it counts as an unearned run because the inning should have been over. <laughs> so the guy, the guy got seven unearned Jesus. runs stacked against him, which is nuts. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's still it's still early, and they're they they're haven't fine. Even Everything comes yet, back. Just, yeah. Price is his rehab starting. Yeah, yeah he did a simulated game, right? He's made. They just I don't remember the. There's date. a timeline they have out <laughs> there that they released to the press what their timeline was. He's making a triple A start. <clears throat> oh, is he? Yeah, I, they just announced when it was going to be, but yeah, I didn't good. see it. Um, God, I almost died right there. Uh, <laughs> Don't you dare yeah, get me so, sick, Dave. Yeah, sorry about that. No, no, I'm not sick. Oh, yeah, enjoy your vacation, cocksucker. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, cocksucker is such a yeah, it's such, it's a, such a word. A good, yeah, yeah. If it was that. coming it's from anyone powerful. else, it would be offensive. Right. Yeah. You <laughs> drop a cocksucker. You drop a cocksucker. It's just like, oh my god, yeah. <laughs> what did you just hit me with? Yeah, you cocksucker. Um, it really is strong. That's a powerful fucking word. Uh, 
Yeah, I can't get into the Sox. I've tried, and the Celtics are still playing, so it's still winter season for me. Like I'm, I'm oh, still all in the Celtics. We're but. approaching the most, the snore days. Man, I'm hoping football's just non-existent. I'm hoping Free next periods, week. Everything well, next gone. week's next week, next Tuesday is the NBA lottery. All right, all which right. is good, NBA and, and we're going to be recording during the lottery because we're doing Tuesday night next week. So oh, yeah. we'll be recording during it, so we'll be able to do a little bit of a little bit of take there. That'll be the social media second for the week. If the Celtics do get the first pick, who do they draft or wherever they get? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Right. None of the above. Yeah, um, you're gonna take faults. We'll see. We'll see. If you get the number one pick, you take the best available player. You pick ball and trade him to the Lakers. You don't pick ball. You trade to the Lakers. <laughs> you don't pick ball ever. You trade the rights to Lorenzo Ball for or Lonzo Ball, sorry. For, Lonzo Ball for the Lakers. For four hundred and ninety five dollars and the Lakers whole team. <laughs> for a lifetime supply of sneakers, which is a pretty hefty fee. Uh and like their next two, three first round picks. What you want to stock up on more picks? Sure. You can always use them. Trade them. Use Probably, them we're just going to keep doing this whole tango with picks. Yes. I was going to say, like, at this right, point. All right, we... So here's what you do. The Lakers will wind up with the first or second pick, more than likely. Yeah. So you just trade them It's going to cold envelope. They're going to get LeVar Ball. Or Le... Right. They're, yeah, they're going to okay, get yeah. LeVar Ball. I'm with you I'm there. okay with that. Now, they're going to not even draft Lonzo. They're going to take the dad. They're going to take LeVar Ball. I, like I really it. think you can LeAngelo. turn this team around. I like how he runs a business. Yeah, let's just go LiAngelo here. Um I think so. If the if the Sox or Jesus, if the Celtics get the first pick in the draft, the Lakers have the second. You take ball, trade them to the Lakers, get their second pick. So you slide down one and that's, get another that's pick. That's really two. dependent on the fact that the Lakers really want ball. They do. They said that, mm-hmm. but or or you take ball and I and I'm the Lakers and I go, that's cool. I'll take Fultz. Now you're stuck with them. Good luck. Well, need, well no, and you would talk to them before and like, hey, we have the first pick. We'll take ball. We'll we'll secure ball for you. And if I'm we'll, Lakers, tra- we'll trade the I'll say, the all right, cool. You do that. Yeah. Or we we'll take. Uh, and then, and I'll be like, all right, uh, cool. We'll take right. Marco yeah, Fultz. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Put him on yeah. the board. Yeah. Then the Celtics are like, fuck. Yeah. All right, call call the number three team. Right. Hey, how about now, ball? Now we the, like, you want? Now we're going Josh Jackson. <laughs> Just yeah. Get the Kansas wig. You're telling me I'm gonna have to deal with Lavar for an entire season? Yeah. You can keep him. I'm keep him. He's gonna be a Laker. And I think if you, I, I really don't. I think don't he's going to get drafted by the Lakers. I think, like, so I, I think, I think the, the Lakers Celtics are going to win the lottery. Yeah, I think the Lakers are going to win the lottery. Right? Yeah. And the Celtics never fucking win the lottery, so of course, you know what I mean. Like yeah. Lakers win the lottery, get Lamar Ball. We'll probably go with Fultz. <sighs> Whatever. We'll do that next week. But uh, yeah, we're reaching some dark days here. It's lottery. That's it. NBA Finals. If the Celtics are in it. Yeah, like, Did, uh, didn't Houston spurt in this? You know, didn't the Rockets and the Spurs go into overtime the other day? Um, may have been yeah. overtime. It was a fourth quarter, or it was a buzzer beater block shot by Ginobili. I don't are know if it was in the three, fourth one? or overtime. I think the Spurs are up like three one now. They could be three one now. That might be true. That'd be good. Yeah. I mean, Spurs. It'll be Spurs Warriors. It's going to be the best series. The Warriors have just been cruising. Same, Same with, with the Cavs. Cavs. Yeah. yeah, they're That's both eight and zero. That's what they're yeah. saying. Cavs are just going to just. Dismantle the Celtics. Have you seen that? Um, have it's you seen that matchup. meme? No. It's like the top is like a scene from the three hundred, and it says like Western Conference Finals, and like there's like a Warriors logo on someone's shield, and like uh, Spurs logo on some dude's like helmet, and mm-hmm. they're like stabbing, they're fighting each other, and it's like all these different Western Conference teams like duking it out, yeah. and it's like Eastern Conference Finals, and it's just a, a chick in a in a wide open field of daisies, and it has the Cavaliers. <laughs> Logo on her, and she's like <laughs> spinning around, like just all by herself. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, the Celtics don't exist, I guess. Yeah, no. that's what I keep seeing. Like, who's going to win the finals? The Warriors, Spurs, Rockets, Cavs. I was like, three from the West. Like, just you can't even get the Celtics in. Like, go Spurs, Warriors, Cavs, Celtics. Uh, like, yeah, well, I'm down on the Celtics now, so I don't think yeah, no, I, it's don't... tough to envision that team beating the Cavs. After what I you think, just... I think matchup wise, it's different. I, and basketball is a lot about after how you, what how you, you match just up. watched. Yeah. Those two last two games in, Avery, in you put Avery Bradley on Kyrie Irving, wash. As long as Isaiah and Irving are scoring, they're gonna they're gonna yeah, watch each other production wise. That's gonna be the tough part. If Al Horford can be better than Kevin Love and Isaiah can be better than Kyrie no, Irving because of Avery Bradley, about. who gets rebounds? <sighs> and they've made it this far without because because I'm put if I'm the Cavs, it's Tristan Tristan Thompson, Thompson and yeah. Kevin Love right down That's low, your four or five, yeah, and they're just banging out rebounds. Mm-hmm. And they're mm-hmm. going to give LeBron three tries at that right. basket. Right. 
They need a rebounder bad, really bad. And there's no one that can slow LeBron down. I mean, you can slow him down a little, but. Right. You, know, you know where they're going to get rebounding help? Where's that? In the postseason. Terry Rozier. <laughs> in, the, yeah. in the postseason? And, yeah, after the season's oh, over. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's when true. they'll get rebounding help. All right, let's go to the social media second. All right, so we kind of I, I ran a poll. We sort of did this already about who was the biggest rival in Boston. But now that we've like officially deemed the city of Baltimore the new New York, right? Like we're kind of over the Yankees thing. I don't Are we leading the charge on this? I think we are. We're starting we're starting the new thing. Oh, Baltimore's such a shittier city than New York is it's anyway. It's much worse of a city. You're <laughs> right. That is true. Uh I was interested to see with the two current rivalries like that was on TV in the past week with the Baltimore Orioles and the Boston Red Sox and the and the who hit who and whose fault it was and when they should have hit them debate. And then the Washington Wizards and the Boston Celtics currently going at it. They dislike each other. They've had a long year of uh, of hatred brewing up. And that's I've, I've right found out that uh, people from Baltimore don't like when you say that the Wizards are their basketball team. The Bullets. No, they no. just don't like... Like oh really? clearly like the Wizards must be from Baltimore like they don't see that Washington and Baltimore are really no because one is Washington D.C. which is technically a sovereign right, right, yeah, thing yeah. and one is Baltimore Maryland which is right. it's other but sovereign. they don't but they don't have another basketball exactly team. so I'm lumping them with them so it's the, are they what are they Charlotte it's Hornet the D, fans it's the like, DMV yeah. area yeah yeah I mean the closest thing other than that would be the Sixers. Yeah, I guess. Right? Yeah. 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 Seventy. All right. I, I think if they want to claim the Seventy Sixers instead of the Wizards, God bless. By you. all you means, can't. Yeah, you that, can't that, because that Philly. Yours. You can't do that because Philly is its own sports town. That's true. Yeah, you can't just jump on that. No. Philly's a great sports town. No. As They're, much as I dislike those teams. The Wizards. I don't, you do I, the I don't know about it being area. a great sports town. I it would is, say oh, that's, it's, that's one of the it's top one, four sports. No, I think it's one of those towns that yeah, you don't want to be Santa Claus in the winter. Yeah. It's the yeah. DMV area. Right. Yeah. There's a, no, you're right. It's the DMV area. Yeah. yeah. No, but th- you don't think Philly's a good sports town? No, I mean, I get... I, or you just I think it's a shitty town? No. <laughs> so I've, ne- I've never been to Philadelphia. I can't yeah. say that. Yeah. Um, no. Are you saying they're not a very successful sports town? Yeah, they're they're like I'll what Boston used to be. We're, they're what Boston used to be. Kind of. When's, when's, when's the last time a Philadelphia team won any That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's 76ers good haven't been good in years. The last time but, uh, yeah, Philly, okay. the, no, the, the Eagles was the were Eagles, good. The Eagles, last time when they made McNabb the, played for them. Made the right. Super Bowl, was against the Pats, and they lost. Right. The Phillies have been awful. Yeah, right. They've well, had, no, 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 they, they won a World, World Series. In they won a World Series. That was the last. That was one. when uh, but they have Ryan Howard, Ryan Howard and uh, how are the Phillies Utley. now? Right, the yeah, Phillies are shitty right now. Well, and everyone then, that was great on that uh, team is gone. What about the Flyers? Have they been good? Not they've great. been okay, yeah, but they haven't. They haven't. They haven't won us. The cup. thing when is, I, when I say a great sports town, I mean like the. You know, Boston was like that. Right. Yeah. You yeah, were the perennial Boston. Chicago. You're the right. perennial loser. Right. Granted, they had Jordan back in the day, but right. other than. I the Bulls. Say Boston was a perennial loser. Maybe in like for twenty the, years, there was not a team that like made the playoffs almost. Uh, I guess. You know what I mean? Like, they they, were, they were dominant, right? In basketball for years. Yeah, the fifties, sixties, eighties, and right, then yeah. even in the eighties, you still had one uh, Super Bowl appearance. Mm-hmm. You had a NBA World Finals. Series appearances. Yeah. So I mean, they did have possibility, but they weren't Ouch. over the top. Go the, over the t- go over right. the edge. The you thing know? that sucks with Philly is they have Pittsburgh. In the same right. state. I yeah. mean, that and, is a massive fucking state. And yeah. Pittsburgh just shits yeah. on them. They do yeah, with yeah. team success, right? See, and with Boston, like except for except for the Pirates. No, but the Pens are good. Well, the Pirates yeah, no, and the Pirates good. Their series more recently than no, but Phillies. but what I'm saying is the Pirates are one of those teams that they're yeah, up the over The Steelers are one of the most successful NFL franchises. Yes, yeah, they are for sure. And then the Pens have been good. They yeah. don't have a basketball team though. Right. Yep. How does um, Pittsburgh not have a basketball team? But Phil, well, because they have the 76ers probably. But it's not the same because Philly has a whole thing right. of teams. Yeah. So why don't they have a basketball team? But, well, there's only 28 basketball I mean, why teams. Does 30, why does, 30. Then why does Baltimore not have a basketball team? True. This is true. Well, true. Baltimore's not a good sports town. There you oh, go. That's true. Back yeah, to yeah. the point. Back to that. <laughs> uh, 
So what what are we what so, was the actual totals of the vote and what did we vote on? I was surprised by this. Um, so I, of course we had the Baltimore Ravens, the Washington Wizards, the Baltimore Orioles, and the Washington Capitals, which would serve as the DMV area opponent for the Boston Bruins. I thought there'd be a lot more recency bias in this, and there wasn't. You're the, extremely wrong, Dave. The Baltimore Ravens finished in first place with twelve votes. I don't understand that. Me neither. I don't get it. I, and Aaron, I know you voted for him, okay? <laughs> you get that <laughs> shitty <laughs> grin off your face. Uh, I can't help it, man. The, I was right. The Washington Wizards you came think in second a, with five. You think there's a legit a hated rivalry between the Pats and I the Ravens? Think so. Yes. I think there's like two guys yes. that don't like each other. It's I'll Charles ex- Suggs and Tom Brady. I'll explain I don't even think why I think that's I think a so one. I well. think that's a one-way thing. That's Not a one-way all. ticket. I don't think Brady likes him. I, yeah, but I don't think it's it's that hated. I think it's right, yeah. Terrell no. Suggs really hates Tom Brady. No, I think it's more than and just And I think Tom that. Brady's indifferent about it. I think the Ravens have not been a thorn in the Patriots' side for a few years now. So I don't, I laugh at them. Like, they don't make the playoffs. That's like trying to tell but, me that the Steelers are a Pats rival. Like, no, yeah, they can't, right, yeah, they right, can't right, beat like, that. Yeah, they've never been. I mean, the, Ravens, <laughs> the Ravens did beat the Pats a few times. In New England. In New England, why, which is tough. Which is why they get this whole stigma around them. And they have won a Super Bowl recently. Mm-hmm. Right. One, where Flacco balled out of his mind. Right. Got paid and then has done shit since. Right. And that, they're just, yeah. I, I don't think they're a good team. I don't think, and even when we did our draft they preview, missed the I was playoffs like, last year. Yeah. I, and I just think they're very mediocre. And even when we did the draft I preview, I said, no matter what they do, they're going to be the same team. Like, it's I don't the same care about thing that, that I bring up every time. You have situations like Bernard Pollard. Yeah, that just takes he out. Yeah, but Bernard Pollard did it on four teams, though. He I just know. Always kills the Pats. <laughs> right, yeah, but yeah. when he was on their team, you add that to right, it. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just all the. It just. I know he's one of those guys that, he, for whatever reason, he has he's a heat sinking yeah. missile yeah, really. for hurting Patriots. If you players. wanted to, if you wanted to take the Baltimore Ravens out of the out of the vote and put just Bernard Pollard in, Bernard Pollard should win. He that would vote. win. He yeah. should win that. He vote. is right. the pa- he is the, he is Patriots the biggest, biggest Boston rival. sports rival. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, the Ravens had 12 votes, the Wizards had five, the Orioles had three, and the Washington Capitals had one, and I don't know who thinks that. Like, that they're the biggest rival? Like, that's a really bold stretch to have them as number one. I would say I'm hoping, yeah. it's, I'm who, hoping it's your buddy Brian. Who are the Bruins' Brian. rivals? Uh, the, the, the Canadians. Rangers? The Canadians. Oh, Canadians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Canadians. yeah, yeah. Canadians. Obviously, yeah. They won the rivalry vote that we did before yeah it's definitely yeah, canadians, it's the canadians yes. rangers rangers and yeah. and, and, and uh, i just don't see i don't see baltimore i don't think the pats have the a rival yeah i don't think the pats have a rival i don't think so either i mean it used to be obviously indy right it's not anymore indy, indy was the rivalry. it was the peyton manning it was right. peyton manning rivalry and that yeah. team i mean the, there's and then it went to denver us, and now Panthers. it's nothing right yeah i would almost say that you know who the rivals of the patriots are is green bay and they don't even play each they other. They don't play each no, other. No, see, I would say it's the Patriots themselves. No, Father we, Time. You would say Josh McDaniels. Well, that he's too. He's the Patriots' biggest rival. I uh, think he's the one holding them back. I don't know. There's so much fire in that Baltimore uh, Orioles-Red Sox series. Yeah. It's hard to... No, I, see, I, I feel think, that way with the Wizards. This is continuous, I think though. If, this is the last two seasons. I, here's yeah, the thing. The I think Orioles. if the Orioles start surpassing them... Mm-hmm. Play wise, like just they are I mean, though. They no, 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 no. I'm not. Them. No, no, no. What I'm saying is like every for the next two, three years, and yeah. then, and, and it's last still year, heated last year up. the Orioles were were banging it out for first place all the way up to the end. Yeah, with with their socks. But I know what you mean. Like you develop that history. You know, what I mean, like five, you I, know, five, six years of God. These fucking guys are always in our way. Do we have right? that with the Ravens? Three or four year stretch. They beat them at home in the divisional round with a Ray Rice 73-yard touchdown run, yeah. right? And then they beat them in the AFC Championship. Yeah. The year they won the Super Bowl. So two out of three, four years, they knocked you out of the playoffs. And tough losses at home, tough games, injuries. You know what I mean? Like there was that – they're kind of – from 2011 to 2015, I would say, like that four-year window was sort of like, man, this fucking team. And like, you know, especially even this year, I will say, I, I thought the Ravens were the worst pull for the Patriots. Uh, being the one seed, like when they got the Ravens in the divisional round, I was like, ah, oh, fuck, that's the that's the last one game year. I didn't the want. last year they won the Super Bowl. No, no. this past year, the Ravens didn't make the playoffs. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. The yeah, the past the past Super Bowl. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. When they pulled them, I was like, ah, oh, fuck. When they did the when and, they did the double pass, right? The double pass, and yeah. that's I mean, that game. They probably should have lost that game. 
know what I'm saying? They were down. There's a lot of games you could say. No, I know. No, I know. Patriots yeah. probably should have lost. But I'm just saying, there's a lot of games that the I Patriots, can think of one. The Patriots, yeah, pretty <laughs> recently. Yeah. But the Patriots also there's I a lot of games. Too. There's a lot of games where the Patriots steamroll their yeah. opponents in the playoffs too. You know what I mean? Like the Houston, the Denver, the, whatever. They, they beat the hell out of people. So that I know game, people who would like say that Denver is the is the uh, rival. That felt true for like two years, but now it's not it, because Peyton was there. Because Peyton's gone, right? Yeah, yeah. or because yeah, yeah. I know, and they people always bring up the Brady's record against Denver is like the only team in the league that he has a like losing record against. It's not even losing, I don't think. But have yeah, you seen yeah. the games where Denver plays in New England? Yeah, those are never good. Those like that's good. you. You talk to Denver fans, they're like, "Oh, Patriots can't play in Denver." Right? Have Denver you ever seen what Denver England. does in New England? Right. That's true. Have you ever seen it? It's it's like. Multiple seventeen plus point losses. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um so yeah, and yeah, I don't think the Patriots have a rivalry. I think you're right about that. I and mean, you were right. The, the general public says it's the Baltimore Ravens. I just don't see I'm sorry, they just there's a lot of hatred there. You I have know, to play I and I don't want to say it's just that it's just because they they're the Patriots hate them. I think it's you have to play into the fact that they're considered. If you took away Ray Lewis, Ray Rice, Terrell Suggs, they'd actually be like a decent franchise and be respectful. The fact that they have these well, I mean, we horrible mur- fucking human beings well, I can't on their even team. Say that anymore. What I was going to say. Well, the Pats have a murderer, but they don't. No, they don't. They didn't murder anyone. No, it's true. It's true. The innocent man. Uh, yeah. No. I mean, hey. Yeah. The rule of the law states. Yeah, yeah. The Patriots no, 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 no. never yeah, employed eyes, a murderer. In the, in the eyes of the court, that man never killed anybody. Um, Except himself. That's right. He's guilty. He, right? did, kill, uh, he did kill somebody himself. Uh, the Patriots are 6-6 six and six against the Broncos. Tom, I'm sorry, Tom Brady 6-6 six and six against the Broncos. That's 2-4 yeah. and four Without Tom Brady. at Denver. Oh, yeah. He has Denver. a losing record in Denver. Yeah, okay. I thought that's what you were referring to, was him playing in Denver. But, yeah, there are 6-6. Six six I right get now. into that argument all the time. They're like, oh, he plays bad in Denver. Oh, you mean this game where he had, I don't know, right. three touchdowns and threw for 350 yards, but yeah. they lost in Denver? Right, yeah, yeah. Like, that's definitely Tom Brady's fault. He yeah. played awful. For sure. That's the worst. Even even the AFC Championship two years ago. Uh, two years ago, where they, they played the twice. Back. Right. The first time during the regular season, mm-hmm. they were stomping the Broncos, and right. then that stupid kid muffed the punt. Yep, of course Harper. Yeah, and it and it turned the whole game around. I fucking hate that. They call that Harper's muff. Yeah, and the, and that sounds dirty. Yeah, that's the Jerry Thornton did that. Like oh, Harper's muff, and it's like that's their that's their thing. Um, but he was they were stomping the Broncos. Right, that, and then also oh, but Brady plays awful in Denver. He didn't. Also, played. remember in the AFC Championship, they were down a lot, came back and needed a two point conversion to yeah. tie it, and they missed the two point conversion. And why did they need a two point conversion? Because Tom Brady came all the way back. No, because Goskowski missed the missed field goal. Missed the field goal. That was yeah. the start of the hits. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. I forgot about that. Did you hear, did you see, hear about the trick? The trick, trick, yeah, the trick kicker kickster. that they brought the in? The trickster kicker. Yeah. Did you hear he's bought into the, the, the New England way? Yeah. He's not. Oh, gonna... he, he's still around. Yeah, yeah I didn't know yeah. if they just brought him in for a workout. If they no, actually he's been signed hanging him. out. He's with the team. Huh. Like he's not signed, but he's there. Huh? Like he's there in presence, not on paper. I just I don't care what it is as long as in a couple of years they sign the kid who can kick eighty yards out of Florida. Or this or kid can kick eighty yards. What really? Yeah. He has he has like a seventy nine yard kick. It's on not YouTube. the same kid though. I don't know. I don't think it, it is. is. I don't know if it is or not. I don't know. I know what you're talking about because we went over that, but yeah. wasn't he out of Miami? Yeah, the Miami, Miami. That's what it was. Miami of Florida. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't know if it's the same person or not, but this kid I checked out his YouTube. Uh, he has uh, a kid. I think it's a 79 yard kick. Yeah, oh, damn, pretty Sorry, good. Goskowski. Pretty good. All right, let's hashtag do, Bud Bice. Let's do our top five. Five. So our top five this week is our top five favorite playoff performances by a Boston sports athlete. 
while wearing the Boston uniform. So you can't say like, oh, Wes Welker on the Denver Broncos. Like, no. <laughs> like, I mean, that doesn't count. Like, it had to have to happen for a Boston sports team. Uh, we don't have a zero because that's a tough one. Uh, Adelius Thomas having a great Super Bowl, but he <sighs> yeah. was a fucking bum every yeah, year after that. Slouch everywhere else. Yeah. Um, actually, my zero, well, let's do my zero right now. Uh, Rache Caldwell dropping the pass in the AFC <laughs> Championship. That's my worst playoff moment. That, uh, that big Rache big eyed Caldwell. Rod- Rodney Harrison not hitting the ball out of the. Oh, fuck you. Yeah. That's a good one. Or the inability to sack the most unathletic quarterback of all time in Eli Manning. They oh. did sack him. They just didn't blow the whistle. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah, they, yeah. But. I don't want to do that. What do you got? What's your worst one? It has to be. What's your worst one? Off the top. This is just off the top. I. I don't know. Uh, oh, Buckner. Ah, all right. There you go. That's a good one, too. That's a good one. Yeah, that's a real good one. And it's, <laughs> and he didn't cost them the series. Like that, They played two games. They at played least one more game after that. One more that. game after that. So it wasn't just right, his was game fault. Six, yeah. It was just happened to cost mine them that has, game. Mine has to be the undefeated season, the Harrison. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Ah, fuck, man. I forgot about that. You're right. That's both of those. Are, both of those are really good. Or, uh, just that whole play, the helmet or catch. Or Aaron Boone. Aaron Boone. Oh, that's a t- that's my yeah. That's probably that hurts my. But heart. I don't think. <laughs> see, the thing about Aaron Boone was I don't think that was a poor performance by a Boston athlete. No, Tim Wakefield was unhittable that series, and then finally he had like a zero ERA coming in relief and coming in that game, and then it's just like ah, it's just do you know what I mean? Like that just yeah. sucks. Yeah, it's that, just hard for a baller to be that consistent too. Right. That was my probably one of my least favorite moments. I cried myself to bed that night as a sixteen year old boy. Watching that game, and oh my god, I hated that so much. Aaron fucking Boone. That was the worst. You're welcome. That's a good one. Yeah, thanks for that. I'm going to have nightmares tonight. All right, so number five, we'll start with Joe. What's your number five all-time Boston sports playoff performance? My number five is Paul Pierce in the 08 playoffs versus a young, well, maybe five years in the league, uh, LeBron James, just a shootout between the two. In the uh, game seven of the semifinals, that was a good game. He put up forty-one points, eight rebounds. Freaking now, what did, up, what did LeBron driving. put up? Was think it he had like fifty? 50. Yeah, he had fifty. But they were working each other on defense. Yeah, they were too. Yeah. Like playing was, defense against each other. Yeah, and and they just like it, uh, there was a stretch for like minutes six through two, like yeah. left in the game in the fourth quarter where it was just everyone get out of the way. Like yeah. it was just one on one. It was great. You know, it, it was a great game to watch. Yeah, just I love that. That's a good one. That's a good number five. Yeah. This list is really tough because there's obviously a bunch of moments in Boston's playoffs mystery, especially in our I lifetime. I feel like we're going to have a bunch of repeats. There's Possibly, be, there's yeah. Towards the, the top. There's going to be some. Top. But it's tough to narrow down five, too. Like, you Recently, know, like, yeah. Well, I was going to you know, say, it's like almost... For our generation. Like, almost, mine, mine are all pretty recent. Like, I didn't dive back into, like... I was going to say, the, the easiest way for it would have been do top three of each sport. That's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. But I'm saying 12, is, I don't think I can give you even one hockey one. I can give you two <laughs> off is the that, top of my head. Is that a preview into your, right, right. into your list? Possibly. <laughs> All right. Well, what's your number five? <laughs> my number five is uh, David Ortiz, the ALCS series versus the Yankees in 2004. David Ortiz. You know what's crazy is David that Ortiz. didn't make my list. That's what I mean. Like it's tough. Like it should. It should. I mean, make my he list. bat. Well, he batted three eighty seven. Yeah. He had a slugging percentage of four four fifty seven, and he had an on base percentage of seven forty two. Vice versa, is it? Reflect? Yeah, first, yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. Uh, he had eleven RBIs in that. Yeah, to say he had three nuts. home runs and eleven RBIs. That's crazy. Eleven RBIs in seven games. That's crazy. David Ortiz, biggest clutch bat ever. Yeah, yes, all time. Right? Could be. Could could go down as the greatest DH of all time. He should be. He should be. He should be, yeah. What's yeah. the argument? Who's the other one? And Edgar, Edgar Martinez. It's but not, it's not, it's not even close. Um, I'm with you. David Thomas. Not David Thomas. Is it David Thomas? David Thomas. Frank who, Thomas? Frank, Frank Thomas, 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 sorry. First the worm. Age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Was it the hurt. worm? He played half of. The, the Big Hurt. The Big Hurt. The Big Hurt. Yeah. Uh, my number five is Larry Legend. Larry Bird, game six versus the Houston Rockets in the NBA Finals. He had a triple-double to close out that championship series. He had 29 points, 11 rebounds, and 12 assists playing the small forward. He was LeBron James before LeBron James. and uh, White guy? White guy. Not European. Great footwork. No. 
Yes. Horrible footwork. That guy looked like he was going to fall over every time he dribbled the ball up. I feel that. You just don't understand what American footwork looks like. Uh, I was going to say, it reminds me of uh, a video I saw of Ray Allen. Yeah. Taking shots from... The preparation thing. The the craziest angles and falling away and getting knocked around. Yeah. He prepared for that. I'm not saying... Larry Bird prepared for that like mm-hmm. that, but just great. If you if, if you're just great at it, right? Yeah. If you, if I think you Larry's can... one of the hardest working athletes of all time. Yeah, because I I think he like we've talked about before. I think maybe even on the show about how with Michael Jordan you could see how natural it was. Like he worked very hard to get to where he was. Obviously, to master his craft to the level he did. But you can just see when someone's naturally gifted. And Michael Jordan had the ability to jump out of the gym. Right. Larry Bird, it was all like technique you know what i mean like it was all it was all about leverage and and, and footwork and yeah. uh being able to outsmart people and know where the play is going to be like his basketball iq is crazy and i think that he just uh, obviously i'm a celtics fan but his ability to play the sport for a guy that just looks like he couldn't play the sport you know what i mean like he just if you if you walk past him you would be like oh that guy's a like a hall of fame basketball player you know what i mean he's a very skinny blonde awkward mustached a uh, pretty tall guy, or whatever. But besides his height, you would not think uh, that guy's an NBA player. I was going to say, in later years, he's gotten better looking. Better looking. He's yeah, aged well. He's aged he's a well. Fine wine. Two, fine wine for sure. Two things. One, Larry Bird, great nicknames. The Hick from French Lake, Larry mm-hmm. Legend. Yeah. Great nicknames. Yeah. Two, have you seen the debate about LeBron and MJ heating back up again? Who's better? Yeah. Yeah. Because LeBron's going to go to his seventh straight finals, which is crazy, or eighth, whatever it is. I understand that, but look, MJ won two, two three-peats. Right. And he took a break in the middle to go play baseball. Right. Because his, his father died. Right. In the prime of his career. Yeah. Right. But anyway, that you can't even have that debate because Le, uh, Michael Jordan is such a better basketball player than LeBron. It is unreal. You said, wait, Michael Jordan's such a better basketball player? Yes, because LeBron imagine if Michael Jordan was six foot eight, two hundred and eighty pounds of pure athleticism. Right. Yeah. Like LeBron is a freak of nature. Yeah, but Michael Jordan wasn't like, he, was, he was what six six. 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 But well, he, he was he was he was scrawny. He was, he was very he was skinny small, yeah, even small, yeah, even yeah. his prime. He, was, like he, a basketball he player. wasn't oh, he wasn't like an Uber athlete. He was just uh, uh, Jordan was quick and could jump. I mean, but so are all of the NBA players. <laughs> yeah, but but his leaping ability is different. Yeah, he could jump really yeah, right, high, right, but that, yeah. that, 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 that and anything to do with his shooting. No, 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 no. LeBron no, is a good Le, LeBron's entire game is predicated on the fact that he is a super athlete. He's just a, a freak athlete. Like right. you should not be six foot eight and two hundred eighty pounds and that athletic. And right. he's a superstar, so he gets a superstar treatment and yeah. goes to the line. But he's not actually times. good. Like. He makes good decisions with the ball. He can pass. He can rebound. But a lot of that is just because he's a freak athlete. Like, he's not a better shooter than MJ, and he never will be. Um, Not to mention MJ averaged more points and has more wins and less games. And and LeBron James is just hitting that number with way more games. Yeah. Yeah. I think you'd have to look up and compare their careers. I'm not saying you're wrong. I don't I'm think just saying of them are their the shooting percentages right because of the difference. Who's in, better? I, Legend? No, I actually have. I think Magic Johnson, I think, is the best basketball player of all time. I know it's different, but yeah. the guy, I think when you go to compare LeBron James, you should compare him to Magic Johnson. Because Magic Johnson was 6'9, thick build, was able to bring the ball up, play the point guard position. Another dude is a freak athlete. The freak athlete, right? Yeah. Uh, could pass, rebound, shoot. You know what I mean? Like he could do it all. But like that's what I'm saying. Do you think LeBron is actually technically as a like a technically better basketball player than MJ in any in any facet of the game? Maybe rebounding. He's not a better defender. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to take away from LeBron James because he's bigger. Like he's, I think I think he uses. He's still his ability to play the sport is is as well executed as Michael Jordan because he's able to do it with such an efficiency. Like, I understand that his size plays into it, but Andy has I don't want to successful. I don't want to take it away. I don't know. I don't know how you define that though. Michael Jordan has six in less and less attempts and less games. Yeah, but Michael Jordan also didn't win a playoff series until Scottie Pippen came. 
but he has six. LeBron didn't win until he went down and that's formed true. a super team. Yeah, right. But I mean, that's I then he came this. back to another super team. If he wins this year, <laughs> right, winning three out of seven is different. Is uh, three out of seven is not as good as six out of six? But like, I hate the argument that's like, oh, he was six out of six because if LeBron goes like five out of ten, that's better. Because then you're telling me it's better to not make the finals. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was the Joe Montana, Tom Brady argument when it was like he was 3-2. and two. I was going to say that, but I don't And then that. it's like, so you're telling me, wait a minute, it's better yeah, to how, lose in the, so in the NFC Conference Le- Championship? LeBron's been playing for... 13 years. 15. He started in, in 2003. 2003. Okay, so, then, so 14. 14 years. Yeah, 14. Yeah, yeah. He's been in 14 seasons, and he's been to how many? I think this. I think he's been to... This is his seventh straight? This is seventh straight, and he had one before that, so this is eighth. Because he went to the one they lost to Spurs on the Cavs before he went down to the Heat. And Michael Jordan went to six. How how many years did he play in that? He missed. He was drafted in eighty four. Don't count his wizard years. You can't do that though. He was. You can't that's not do that. the same. All right, all right, all right. Even if you take the wizards years out, wizards years out, he was drafted in eighty four. He did a three. Played until ninety nine, ninety eight. He did without, a three p. Took a break. Yeah. Did a three peat retired, right. right? And then did yeah, we'll call a retired after on that. top. He right. didn't play a season after that, right? He did with the Wizards. No, yeah, that, but not right, with yeah, the Bulls. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Right. So how many years did he play before they the I want to say three-peat? eight. He played eight seasons before the I first three. So. He was drafted in eighty two or eighty four and then he He was how many years did he play in college? Three probably. Three or four. I would say. they used to have at least the two-year rule back then. So he probably came in when he was like 22? Yeah. 23? Yeah, I want to say that, yeah. He didn't win his first championship until he was 31? He didn't win a playoff series until Pippen joined the team. Like, a lot of people, that's the, that's the thing. Is like There's this mystique about Michael Jordan that it's like very... Well, I mean, the dude was dominant even before Pippen was there. He just he won, was a really good basketball player. Win. Right, yeah. He's I mean, really good unbelievable. I mean, right. you're talking about averaging 40 points a game. Yeah. 30 points a game. Yeah, no, and he, yeah, he was able to do that. But also, like we were talking about earlier, it, it's really easy to accumulate stats when you're the only guy on the team. Like but He, did it, he like, did it after, though. Like, I don't think that uh, – I made this point to, to him earlier. I don't think it's a coincidence that Russell Westbrook averaged a triple-double the year after Kevin Durant left. Yeah, but MJ did it with Pippen there, too. He did, but it went down. Yeah, but it's, Pippen was still there. It yeah. went down from 40 to 30. Right, yeah, 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 <laughs> that's true. Uh, I don't know. I, it's I don't want to say it's so tough to do. I don't like doing that. Like who's better than who thing because it's like I don't even think it's close. I think I, there's I a lot of stuff. I can see the Montana argument. LeBron, LeBron James is a lot better of a passer than Michael Jordan. He's a yeah. lot better of a passer. This is also coming from the same guy that's a huge Kobe Bryant fan. So you're gonna have that where he's gonna mentality wise, he's gonna look at See, it differently but that's, than you. That's the like. This is what I always think about. That's yeah. not a slight on you, Dave. I just hate. Kobe yeah, Brown. I would I just say, don't know what that means. Kobe, like, how does that fit into? This, I would though? put Kobe over LeBron. Kobe over LeBron. See, this is why. As a, as an actual basketball player, because or he's a career, a, because he's not an uber athlete. He's not a freak. That's tough. That's tough to say. He's not a freak. He's not a freak athlete. LeBron, like there are no how many six foot eight, two hundred and eighty pound people are that athletic? Jordan was drafted in eighty four and didn't win his first championship until nineteen ninety two. So yeah, eight so years. the ninety one ninety two season. I'm sorry, no, no, I'm sorry, ninety one. So it was the ninety ninety one season. So seven 91. years. Seven years, yeah. And that's like it's pretty comparable. You know how people always argue that Peyton Manning is the best quarterback of all time? Is he like Peyton Manning right. or it's this is why I think Tom Brady is. Take away all the suits. Let's say they both had one Super Bowl. Yeah. Peyton Manning was supposed to be that good. Right. It's even more impressive that Tom Brady is that good. Right. That's why he's I a better quarterback yeah, yeah, than yeah. me. Yeah. Peyton Manning was supposed to be the best quarterback of all time. He was the number one pick. He was supposed to be. Okay. So do you think um, that good? He was me, the the second coming. Before we before we completely just abandon the top five yeah. here. Is LeBron better than Larry, uh, Larry Bird? Three-time I, I, champion, been to four, I think. Uh, Larry? Yeah. That's tough for me. 
as a Boston fan, because uh, yeah, as a Boston he fan, is, and, he and, is, I mean, LeBron and is using your theory, yeah, but using my theory. Larry Bird was a better pure basketball player than, than LeBron. LeBron James. If LeBron James was Larry Bird, if think about if you put LeBron James. No, I'm saying I'm saying take the sentence that you said about Peyton Manning is supposed to be great. Or he's supposed to be great. Yeah. Right? LeBron James is supposed to be great. Yeah, right? yeah the dude okay. was. So do you think that Larry Bird is a better player than than the guy than that's a, supposed a to be a pure basketball player? Yes. Because he doesn't have to rely on his athleticism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get, I get your point. He, Larry yeah. Bird, literally did it with no athleticism. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just zero athleticism. That was pure the, basketball ability. The Larry Bird magic card comes with minus twenty five athleticism. Yeah, like you, could dry, you drop <laughs> and, the, a, and the a thousand legend. point uh, toughness. He had yeah, a bad. He had a tough. bad back. Yeah. You get minus five back toughness. He had, I mean, Larry Bird <laughs> on pure basketball ability is definitely a better basketball player than LeBron. I'll tell you what, I don't have a LeBron James performance in my top five, and I do have a Larry Bird. You can't so have a LeBron. James I can't have a LeBron James. I pretty much, I almost have a LeBron James performance. What is your number four? Um, my number four is the Isaiah Thomas game. Like with I'm his gonna, sister. I'm gonna piggyback that too. Yeah. Mine is also number four. Isaiah Thomas sister's birthday game. Fifty three points. Tw- awesome. What, twenty nine in the fourth quarter in overtime? Yep. Yep. Just uh, on his sister dead sister's but recently deceased sister's birthday. Yeah, just from like a week previous. That's just I mean, come on. That's, to piggy, piggyback on that. Uh he scored twenty nine in the fourth in overtime, like he said. The Wizards scored thirty points in that same time frame. Yeah. He almost outscored the Wizards. Outscored the Wizards almost. And only Charles Barkley, Michael Jordan, John Havlicek, Rick Barry, Allen Iverson, and Jerry West have scored more points than Allen I- or more points than Isaiah Thomas in that game. So he is in a elite that's, group of seven people. Do you think that's up there with like a Jordan flu game or Brett Favre? It, Brett Favre, the game where his dad died. Remember that Celtic, game? Oh, of course, yeah, yeah. I almost said that we should do a top five like, heavy hearts games. of the crazy like heavy hearts games. Just because there was guys, there's a there's a recently a hockey player that did that. His his mother died, and then like literally the the way, week after he came back and he put up like I think he he had a hat trick by the end of the game. Yeah. If the Celtics were to win the championship this year, yeah, that'll go down as the flu game type thing. You know what I mean? What if they battle the Cavs to seven? Uh and lose. I, I think Boston fans will will remember it. Yeah, but I think nationally it will kind of get yeah, forgotten, yeah, yeah. like a forgotten story. Like if if the Bulls lost that series where Jordan had the flu game, it'd be like, man, that was a great performance. And then like twenty five years later, it'd be like, whatever. Like yeah. it didn't matter. It didn't help them achieve anything. You know what I mean? So it, it's over. What about you? What's your four? Uh, piggybacking last names, but different first name. Uh, I know where you're going. Tim Thomas. Yeah. Ooh. Um. His uh. In the. Stanley Cup Finals against the Canucks. He had a save percentage of 967, and he had two shutouts. Yeah, that's uh, when they invented the term standing on your head, right? <laughs> no, but uh, he Did was... he handstand all the way to the... Oh, he didn't go to the White House. <laughs> no, he refused to go to yeah. the White House. Um, he was an older gentleman, kind of bounced around. Uh, he was a university, I want to say, of Vermont alum. He's just he was just so great that year, that whole postseason. Yeah, he they they rode him. He retired that not cup. that long after, right? No, he played a couple years, and then when Tuca was starting to make his push for the starting position, um, Did he, he started that? he started getting disgruntled, and then they ended up having to send him to. Uh, I want to say he ended up with Florida at the end of his career. Mm. And then he just recently retired a couple of years ago. Really? Yeah. He held on for a while. But no, he was extremely good in that I postseason. That. He carried them. They had, I want to say uh, Horton was good in that series. Yeah, he uh, had the big, uh, the, the big game winner in yeah, the overtime the yeah. for the championship series. So they had some great players. I want to say also, was it Bergeron? Played with like, all like with a hernia, a sports hernia, yeah, or like there's something screwed or up there. uh, or uh, a punctured lung or something like that. Like he every year, if you look at like what he finishes with, he ends up with like some sort of injury that's insane. And you're like, like you how'd you? Yeah, yeah, how'd you play with that? Like he played the the season with that. Yeah. Um. No, it's just a guy that was probably like close, probably forty. Yeah. Almost forty. 
and just went ape shit. And he played, from what I heard, he played a fairly unorthodox style of goalie. Yeah. It was the, uh, he did carry on that. He, he did. Them, that, that, was whole, an, that whole. Yeah, that was an awesome cup. stretch. That was nuts. Uh, my number three, we go to three, right? Yes, sir. Hey. David Ortiz's 2013 World Series. Uh, he batted 688 for the whole series. David Ortiz. David Ortiz. You could really say that whole playoff run. When was that, Dave? When was the. It was a. That was a divisional series against the Tigers. Right? Yeah. Walk off home run? Uh, tied it. It was a grand slam to tie it. They were down four. Yeah, yeah, grand slam to tie it. Yeah. Um, yeah, that whole playoff run was nuts. But really, I think in the World Series, it was just ungodly. He batted 688 in 2013. He was 11 of 16. He had two doubles, two home runs, six RBIs. He had eight walks. Yeah, they had to walk him. There was no one else on that team doing anything either. So it's like you walk him, whatever. He had a 760 on base percentage. And he slugged 1.188. Yeah, so he's averaging more than a base. Out of his bat, mind. Which is crazy. That was the wild. That was the wildest. He every carried night, them. Three for four. Every, you know what I mean? Like he carried four, them. Two for three. Three for four. They I literally think. won games strictly because of David Ortiz. Right. If he was not on that team, they would have gotten. They wouldn't have gotten there. No. But yeah. even if they, even if he, whatever, like fell out of the plane on the way to the World Series, yeah, then they get swept. Won. There's no way. Swept. Who was close. the guy that got the uh, the World Series trophy tattooed on his rib cage. The Johnny Gomes. Johnny Gomes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I love that guy. He also thinks that he's the reason why he's the best pinch hitter in baseball history. He says he's the, he's the weird guy that like sits on the bench and all of a sudden right. his team does really good. Yeah, and he thinks because he did it for the Royals. Good clubhouse guy. That's what Johnny Gomes is. Was it the Royals? Yeah. Yeah, he did it with the Royals, and then he came to Boston, and, he, and it's just like, oh man, he's a good clubhouse guy. Yeah. Yeah. I think we no. I think we got him from. Uh, I think he was with Cincinnati the year before that. Oh yeah, no. I just mean that, he's, like he, that. He, he was done the, it before, He was a pinch yeah. hitter for the Royals when they were really good, and then uh, wasn't he on the Rays too at one point? I think he was on the Rays at one point. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he went around the league. Or maybe he was on the Rays against the Royals in that series. He was no. He was on the Royals. For he was on the Royals. Oh, yeah, runs, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, he just maybe I should put Johnny Gomes as my number three. <laughs> 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 what do you got, Joe? What's your number three? My number three is uh, the Schilling Bloody Sock. That's a good one. I'm not, there's a lot I have I have left off my list here. That just, I mean, that's <laughs> that's really good. That's the reverse the curse year. Mm-hmm. That's during the greatest baseball playoff comeback of all time. Yeah, down three zero. That's right. my number five. So a lot of people Ortiz say that's the greatest was on the team. You know, yeah, playoff. Yeah. Come back ever. I mean, I, it was the first time somebody in the if you want to in I, I don't want to say it might have been major sports come back from a three. I think hockey deficit. had one. It, it was the first been. one in baseball. For sure. yeah, it was the first one in baseball. It's never happened in baseball. basketball, and if, I think you, hockey had one when they did it. If you want to do the conspiracy theory drop, yeah, because there is that conspiracy theory that um, that the entire bloody sock is fake it's fake i believe that i don't know there's a lot of clubhouse reporting that that was real yeah i think that the actual visual like on the outside of the sock i think it's fake i think he was also bleeding out of the sutures in his foot but i think that that was dramatic effect like dramatized yeah yeah why would he do that though because it's like a morale booster like look at that guy look at he's you know he's getting through it but if his teammates, if his out. teammates know he's no, it, no, his teammates might not know. Like if you see, yeah, but that's the kind of thing. It's like, uh, no, there were guys that claimed that they saw the actual. Right, foot. I think he was bleeding like out of foot. his foot. Yeah, I think yeah. he was bleeding out of his foot. I just don't think that it that looks too. It looked too good. I know. It's a perfect, I, I perfect know, circle. Like I know they were no talking, drop, no well, nothing. Yeah, well, that 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 whole theory. But by the end of the game, if by the time he's. Done pitching. If you yeah. look at it, it gets much bigger. Yeah, I'm not a bloody sock truther. Huh? Just draw it on. You just, you know, what I mean, he go down. Dave's yeah, a goes, bloody sock truther. Goes, yes, because the, the, <laughs> you yeah, gotta make it look yeah, real. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. Jesus. no, because they, you know, there's not cameras on you when you're in the dugout. Oh, you go to the clubhouse. They go in. They go he in did. all the time. But he wasn't. Yeah, yeah. Do you know that? Did you watch it? Did you watch every second that he spent? I didn't watch every club? second. Right, cool. That's what I'm saying. Did you know Jesus. jet fuel doesn't burn at a high enough temperature to melt steel beams? You know that you don't know what you don't know is all I'm saying. That's all I mean. What's your three? My number three is uh, 
Bill Russell versus the Lakers in uh, 1962, the middle. finals. Yeah. Uh, 1962. Yeah. It's only 28 years before I was born. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> um, game seven, he had 30 points and 40 rebounds. That's still an NBA finals record. Yes. 40 30 rebounds. 30 points. And 40 rebounds. 40 rebounds. Right. Yep. I think the Celtics have 40 rebounds as a but, team. But – so far, this is but playoff series. The this re- season. But yeah, the but. reason why um, LeBron changed his number when he went to when he went to Miami mm-hmm. was because he didn't want to be disrespectful to Jordan. So he changed his number right. to six when the right. greatest player of all time, yeah. Bill Russell, wore number he six. Could, he could be my greatest so, player, though. You know the argument about Bill Russell, though. I said that he only played four teams. Yeah, there's, there's, fucking there's no five competition. teams in the league. Yeah. My point was he just was unbelievable. So good. I mean, that's that's picking one game out of his whole entire right, career. Yeah, yeah. But that yeah, forty fucking rebounds for a postseason one game. performance. And yeah. for the last game of the finals. Right. Like, granted, it's the last game, go all out, but yeah. come on. That's yeah. a lot. Yeah, and that was to clinch their fourth straight championship. So so that's pretty good. Bill Russell. Pretty good stretch. What's your number two? Anybody? My number two is uh Larry Bird. In the 84 finals. Yeah. Yeah. Um, game five, he hit 15 out of 20 shots from the f- from the floor, had 34 points, and he averaged 27.4 points a game and 14 rebounds. Hold on. That's your number two? Yes, my number two. And you have – you hint uh, – maybe you don't then. Maybe you lied to me. You hinted that there are two hockey ones on there. I said that there could be if you he did, said, if you did, a, if you could, did a list for just He hockey. said he could name two off the top of his head. All right. Two hockeys off the top because of his head. Because if there's another hockey one today, on there, and it's not one of the two other ones that it could possibly be, <laughs> there could be issues here. All no, right. the today is the anniversary of Bobby Orr's game-winning goal. Yeah, that's right. Is it 30 years? I think so. Something, something like, like that. No, yeah. no. Anyway. It's, yeah, anyway, yeah. Back yeah. to the Larry Bird one. But no, I just yeah. I that that series he just went fucking nuts. Yeah. No, he did. And he I mean, granted, like everybody talks about how what he had for help. That's but. the one that you had already? No. Didn't you have a Larry Legend one? No, no. I had a different one. Game six in nineteen eighty six was mine. He had a triple was, double to win the series. And what was his on yours? Nineteen eighty four? Eighty four finals. Yeah. yeah. What'd he do? He, uh, <laughs> I was shocked. I was thinking, I was brainstorming about, about what Aaron hockey? said about because hockey? I was trying to figure out what, what else is on his list. And I was almost offended. <laughs> he, uh, he's at, he averaged 27.4 points a game and 14 rebounds. Oh, That's what damn. he averaged. So he every averaged a double, double. Yes. I said 30 years for Bobby Orr. Yeah. It's 47. <laughs> so you know. I was going to say, I'm pretty <laughs> sure yeah, it was yeah. like at least 60s. Yeah. Let's say 1970. 70. Close enough. Um, what's your number two? My number two is uh, the most recent one. Well, outside of Isaiah Thomas, Tom Brady, uh, the comeback against the Falcons uh, in the last Super Bowl, mm-hmm. down 28 3. Okay. Two minutes left in the third. Yeah. They start their comeback. Biggest biggest Super Bowl deficit. Did you see the, the, the video of the guy running? At the Boston Marathon, yeah, the, he just runs yeah, along the, ca- and run the camera and then yeah. <laughs> don't quit and then never flips it around. It. Yeah, and it's, it's got awesome. the. I love the ESPN asked him for it, and he was like, "After the way that you guys steamrolled Tom Brady, go screw, fuck <laughs> off." Uh. He broke Super Bowl record uh, pass for seven. passing yards. He broke seven. Yeah, records seven records. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, yeah, that's I, hard I, not to. And their running back the, broke a record too. The only so reason it's like the only reason it's number two on my list. Yeah. Is because it's supposed to be uh, overall performance. Yeah. And in I know the first what, half. I know what you're doing. A little I get shaky. It. I get it. I get it. My number two is from the same game. It's James White from that day. Oh, uh, yeah. Unreal. He, he was broke, the offense. <laughs> he broke the all time receiving record, receptions record in the Super Bowl. And he's a fucking running back. Yeah. Right. He had 14 catches. He had 110 yards. He had a receiving touchdown. He averaged 4.8 yards per carry. Had two rushing touchdowns. Also had two two, two point conversions. conversions. So he had twenty two points out of the thirty four points that the Patriots scored. Yeah. James White and broke a record for most two point conversions converted in, in the Super Bowl and most individual points scored in the Super Bowl. James White absolutely owned that Super Bowl. Unreal, second best performance all time. 
He it was, it was nasty. I mean, it was disgusting. The whole offense changed when he when they subbed when him. Lewis still what Lewis yeah. White. It was like and even Blunt to White. Whatever. Whenever they, uh, um, I'm sorry. Uh, whenever, <laughs> uh, whenever they had him in the game, I mean, it was just nonstop. It was awesome. What's your number one? My number one is Tom yeah. Brady, Super Bowl Fifty One. All right. You know, we already pretty much said it, but the largest comeback in Super Bowl history, first time ever in the Super Bowl. Dave's prediction, bold prediction, yeah, was uh, they would they would go to overtime, first overtime in a Super Bowl, yeah, and uh, you know, um, just the seven fucking things, records that he set for a Super Bowl. Right. You know, 42, uh, 43 completed passes. Was it 62 attempts? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 43, 62, yeah. And uh, 466 yards, two touchdowns, which isn't, you know, overwhelming. But right. we already talked about how James White just went nuts. And uh, his quarterback rating was a 95.2. I'm going to piggyback off that because that's also my number one performance. Mm-hmm. And for me, it wasn't so much about... I his know we're mother. grading the performance, but it was his mother being there. His mother all the deflate, shit from the season before. deflate gate vengeance. You know what I mean? Like it was just that was the perfect like culmination of if there was any better time to win a Super Bowl, it 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 was right then. You know what I mean? Like there was just that was the perfect storm of emotional for him, revenge, even though he'll never admit it. You know what I mean? Like it's all it all was right there. So as an emotional standpoint, like as a fan of his, it was like that was the best. I mean, it just even though they said he only had the two touchdowns, he had the pick six. I mean, there was a, there was a tough two and a half quarters there, but to be able to also put his name on that twenty five point comeback, thirty four unanswered, or I'm sorry, thirty one unanswered points in was it twenty game minutes or whatever? You know what I mean? There was like, two like, minutes. There was two minutes left in the third quarter. Yeah, 15 in the fourth, yeah. and then four or five minutes into overtime, yeah. whatever. So it's 2022 game minutes. Well, you knew it was over. The moment, the moment it, they went to overtime. They went to yeah. overtime. It was all set. Yeah, yeah. So right. See, I was still sketchy. I, I was, was still like, nervous because they the don't Patriots get the ball, have that history of – If you don't get the ball because it's the first team that's going to touch Once they won the coin toss. Coin toss was it over. Was, it was – they're going to yeah. go – they're going to score right yeah. here. I knew right, it was right. going to happen. Yeah, yeah. What's – and then the rule is – it's if you if score you, a touchdown, it's over. If you, right. kick, if a you kick a field goal, goal, they get a chance. Yeah. Right. And if they kick a field, field goal, goal, then it becomes sudden death. Yes. Next team to score wins. Yeah. So that's my number one. Uh, I know where you're going, but go ahead. Fill us in. I think you guys have the right player. Right. Just the wrong game. Yeah. And that's because I know you're saying his, four per- touchdowns. his performance against the, the best defense in the NFL at the time mm-hmm. in the Seahawks, Yeah. This the Super Bowl before – he put up – it was another comeback in the fourth quarter. Right, 10 points, yeah. 10 points with 10 minutes. He had well, Yeah, he did have four touchdowns that game. Four touchdowns, two picks, yeah. He had over 300 and – this is off the top of my head. 396 in the, in the fourth, yards. But how much did he have in the – it was like 200-something yards yeah, passing like, in the fourth quarter and yeah. he only had like – Three or four incompletions. Right. Yeah. He was. Uh, yeah. He was like Against, sixteen of twenty or this something. Is, in the this is this is the difference. Like I understand you. Yours is more of the moment, mm-hmm. and mine is strictly performance. Right. I have no qualms with that. He one. is. This is the best defense in the NFL, right. and he tore them apart in On the, the most biggest Im- stage in the most important game right. of the season. Right. And this is still during. Deflate gate shit had just come out the week before, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's two weeks ago. Yeah, no, you're right. And he silenced it. Mm-hmm. Well, for the time being, yeah, right. Yeah, and just deflate this. I still, you know, what I mean, right? Yeah. And and the season before that, that Seahawks team beat the shit out of his number one rival, and he came against the same Seahawks defense, right? Yeah, and lit him up, right? So what was that? Twenty eight, twenty four. The final score there. Yeah. They yeah. Twenty eight, twenty four. Yeah. They've never um, won a Super Bowl by more than four points. Until this one. Yeah, until this, this six. one. Yeah. yeah, right, right. All right. Yeah, so that's our top five. I think that's a good list. That's tough. That's a tough thing to do because I also I left off Havlicek's game, yeah. right, where he scored 54 points. I left off Bill Russell's game seven with the NBA Finals record. I left off Ortiz's 2004 ALCS. I left off Adam Ventieri in 2001. 
which I need you could make or, the or two thousand three or four. Yeah, one. The, yeah, but one was like the one where he had the kick against the Raiders. Yeah, the two kicks against yeah. the Raiders and the Rams kick. You know yeah. what I mean? So that was. I mean, he he won the Super Bowls in the other two as well. Can't but ever go but to that a whole play can, can never have a kicker in the top five. <sighs> that was pretty tough. We do top five kickers. Maybe. Those we snow kicker in the top those five. snow kicks. No, it's never. It's tough. That's tough. And he got a Super Bowl ring just like everybody. He's got. Four Super Bowl rings. Yeah. He's got yeah. one with the Three Indianapolis Colts. and one with the Colts. Yeah. He also has uh, – Tom Brady does not have the most wins in the NFL. I hope everyone knows that. Everyone Adam says that he does. Adam Vinatieri does. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now you're mad at him. <laughs> I'm mad at him, yeah. Uh, let's get into Bok Talk. Let's wrap through these here. Uh, we'll do these real quick. Yeah. yeah. Do the Bok Talk. You ready? What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. That's a book. <laughs> I can One day. Every time. I just see, I, I'm so ready to get through it, and I look over at Joe, and he's got this grin. Like, it's just, it, it hits every time. One day. That's a, that's a book. Uh, Joe, what is your book talk? Uh, uh, I'm talking about my favorite person. Of course. Uh, the LeVar Ball and his. T- Four hundred and ninety five dollar sneakers. Space shoes. What the fuck is that? And two hundred dollars sandals? Big baller brand. You gotta be a big baller to buy these. So only buy these rappers shoes are gonna buy your fucking shoes? No, everyone's gonna buy them when they show up at Payless, like I love five that Marshall's years from meme. Now. Yeah, Marshall's, Marshall's the Marshall's meme. Yeah. Marked down at sixty dollars because no one they bought them. Bit of them. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. I, well, and I, I also respect Lavar Ball's uh, mantra: <laughs> "Losers ain't gonna buy these shoes." No one's gonna buy those <laughs> I was shoes. Like, I was like, well, it's probably true. He's you right. I mean? He's right yeah. in a way because no one's gonna buy them. Right. So You're losers right are included in the no one. You're mm-hmm. right. <laughs> That's right. Uh, what's yours? Your Bach talk. <laughs> My Bach talk is the head coach of the Baltimore. Ravens, almost said Royals, uh, Baltimore Ravens, John Harbaugh. Mm-hmm. He spoke up this week and decided mm-hmm. to chime in and, and back up his his fellow Baltimore team, the Orioles, and say that the the hit that hit uh, Xavier is it, Xander, 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 Bogarts. Xander Bogarts was a love tap. That was a love tap because – it was a curveball. It was a curveball. It was a curveball. 76 miles an hour. It was 77 miles an hour. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah, it a love sound, tap. It does sound like a love tap. It's I mean, not, it's soft, but it's... I, my point is, why are you commenting on it? Yeah. I think me and you had a really good conversation the other day uh, about how, like, where did the whole Baltimore thing go, come from, yeah. right? And he was saying how in Boston, you know, you see, like, Tom Brady tweet to Isaiah Thomas, like, your turn. And the Garrett Blonde and all those guys are at the Celtics games, and then and then they go to the hockey the hockey games or hockey players at the Red Sox games, and the Red Sox have the Patriots come out and bring their trophies. Like the whole city and all the ownership is they really, buy into the yeah they're all Boston mentality. Yeah. And he said it feels like Baltimore now that they've had some success. Like the Orioles are a little bit better. The Ravens won a Super Bowl a few years ago. The Wizards are the fourth seed in the East. Maybe they're starting to do the same thing, kind of create a little community of of. Boston based or, or Baltimore, DC, DMV area, whatever themed things. And the ownership is now obviously starting to represent, you know, I mean, the other teams in the city. And I think that that's a really interesting take because that, that kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like just a, like a joint effort. You mindset. know what I mean? By, by the, yeah, mindset. Mindset, yeah. It's, it is kind of us against them kind of yeah. thing. And, well, no, and, I mean, that's what happens. I mean, when, when, uh, Garnett got signed to the Celtics. One of his first things he wanted to do was go to a Red Sox game, and he had to throw out the first pitch. Come to find out, he's a huge Red Sox fan and has mm-hmm. like a, a closet full of hats, right? Of just Red Sox hats. Yeah, maybe, maybe Baltimore should try being more racist. That's a it big, might help them. That's a big thing. Yeah. Well, here yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not right. going there. We're as racist as we can be, and it helps us a lot. Yeah, right, apparently, yeah. win a lot of championships yeah. being we're, pretty we're racist. Gonna, we're going to go out and get uh, Gordon Hayward in yep. the off season. We're going to yep. cut all the black players off yep. the Celtics. Yeah, we're going to have team. we're going to have the shortest black man and the tallest white man on our team. And I'm really just pumped be it. for like the Jonas Direct, Bo Kelly, Olen, Gordon Hayward. We're going to get Alex Len. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna get JJ Redick. JJ Redick. I'm sorry. I'm not joking. I'm not white guy. I'm sorry. 
I would, I'm not joking. I would trade for Christoph Porzingis. I I would seriously. We said white white team. I understand that, but I'm on all seriousness. <laughs> oh Jesus! I would trade. I would trade away the first pick we have for Christoph Porzingis. I would not do that. I would do it. Very soft. Yeah, I don't like stretch force. So anyway, my point was I Harbaugh do. just is a moron. He needs to shut up. Yeah, just mind your biz, bro. Talk about it during your season. I know it's the downtime. You must be bored because your team sucks. Yeah. Well, he has to try and keep up with his brother who's, like, taking his shirt off and meeting the Pope. Have you seen <laughs> what Jim Harbaugh is up to? Jim Harbaugh's up to no, no good He's right now. just up to craziness. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's no good. Uh my yours, Bartok- Dave. What my is bar- yours? My bar- what is yours? Is Ray Allen that petty fuck? <laughs> God. Did you see him? Area 21, right? KG show on TNT. He has a reunion with the, the Boston Celtics because they're at the 10-year mark of when they won their championship. And he has Glenn Davis, Rajon Rondo, Kendrick Perkins. Sam Cassell was there, but not on not on set. Oh, they let Sam Cassell out of Sam Area Cassell 51? Like, yeah, right. Sam so Cassell got like Area 51 to Area 21. And uh, so it was Perk, Big Baby, Paul Pierce, KG, and Rondo, right? And Doc Skyped in. like He did a little video, like, you know, conference with him or whatever. And Ray Allen wasn't invited because the Boston Celtics don't like Ray Allen. Well, he just left. Yeah, he not, and not only did he just leave, he a lot of people... For, not only just that, a lot of people forget that he was mad at Danny or at Doc for starting Avery Bradley over him. And he says, listen, this is better for us. You come off the bench. You're an electric scorer. You can shoot from anywhere. You're really good minutes when yeah. they're number two. When they're when they're two sits, you come off and you're facing up with their bench guy, you're going to torch them. You're yeah. going to go crazy. No, 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 no. I'm Ray Allen. I'm Ray Allen. I'm Ray Allen. Right? So during that off season, and he was linked to a bunch of trades every time he was around because he was a very tradable commodity. Yeah. Danny told him, listen, if you sign with us, we'll give you a $12 million contract, guaranteed to start, I'll talk to Doc. No trade clause. Ray Allen signed with the Miami Heat for $6 million to be Dwayne Wade's backup and come off the bench and could have been traded. No trade, no, no, no trade clause in his deal. So... Not only that, wasn't there a thing where his kid was sick and he was getting treated at the Boston hospital? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he was like just John like, Hopkins. Yeah, nah, right. fuck the kid. Right, <laughs> we're moving to Miami. Yeah, we're, yeah, I'm moving out. That's it. And he, I liked Ray Allen, but the way he left deserves the negative feedback. Ray Allen's so been now, a part of his entire career. Right. So the the reason why I, why he makes my balk talk is because he wasn't invited to this thing, and they like KG brought up like, listen, man, here's the thing. I know a lot of y'all wondering, like, where's Ray? Where's Ray? He says, this was about, like, loyalty and about guys that are Celtics, whatever he's like. So we just don't feel like he really fits into that group. So we didn't want to have, you know, obviously, like, shout out to hey, him. He went and got himself a championship. Glenn Davis. Glenn Davis. Now, Glenn Davis, is a, he could also, he, Bok Talk 2.0, uh, Glenn Davis. He went on to say, on the air, you know, the thing with Ray, like, that 2012, 2013 season, we were really thinking, like, man, we could win a championship. Glenn, you were nice. in, you Did were, you just hear Glenn Davis in studio? That was Glenn Davis. That was uh, unreal. Was Davis. I, didn't, I, I didn't know Glenn Davis was around. I played, I played the drop. That was actually a quote that from was, yeah. That was directly Glenn Davis. So he says, in the 2012-2013 year, we thought we could win a championship. Glenn Davis, you were on your second year in the Orlando Magic of that year. You weren't on the roster when <laughs> Ray Allen made the decision to go to the Heat. What the fuck are you talking about? So he's like, still mentally a Celtic. He's, he's Celtic mentally a life. child. He has no idea where he is. Uh, he definitely got fed and dressed on his way there. Like no one, he does not do that on his own. Uh, so then Ray Allen, the petty fuck that he is, to wrap this up, goes on Facebook and posts a picture of him in a Heat jersey. Playing the Celtics with his elbow in Rajon Rondo's head. Yeah, because he didn't like Rondo. No caption. Uh, uh, de- he, dedication over dedication over something or so, it was something, something over loyalty. It wasn't over loyalty, but it was something like some. It is fucking petty on like petty level one hundred. Like it was so bad, and I'm like, get the fuck over it, dude. You left, eat it, whatever. Like be that guy, be the to, villain. To be, be honest, that. if you ask me who I who I hate more, it's Rondo. Over Ray Allen? Over Ray yeah. Allen? I still think Rondo. I still look at Rondo and think Celtic. Me too. I don't. I will for the rest of my life. 
Sorry, when he did that GQ fucking photos where he thought he was Michael Jackson. It has nothing Jackson, to do with him being a Celtic. It, it has all to do with it with me. How? What does that have to right. do? We're, we're, all right. I we can't wrap my mind around this. We've established that my mind goes many other places. Him on the cover of – what about Tom Brady? Is he not a patriot because he does GQ covers? I think he looks ridiculous. No, he's a model. Like he's a model Wait, for the second. day. You think he looks ridiculous on GQ, but when we get into your other thing, <laughs> yeah, yeah. he oh, doesn't yeah, look all right. ridiculous. Actually, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Don't act like you're not impressed. Actually, I'm not even mad. That's amazing. I am mad. Oh, I like that. I am mad. <laughs> you do you do your fucking I'm not mad at it right now. Yeah, Aaron. What's your I'm not mad at it about? <laughs> My, I'm not mad at <laughs> <laughs> the wolf pack and uh and uh Supporting cast of the of the New England Patriots in their fashion choices at uh, the Kentucky Derby this weekend or last weekend. No, you, you like no, it? No, I, I, like I quite enjoyed the bright, weird colors. Oh, you like Tom Brady's giant fedora that took up like the entire view of the racetrack? The widescreen fucking yeah. 14 by 16. You have not seen me wear he some of my ridiculous clothes. Tom. I will do that. You so know, why do you beat. hate Rajon Rondo for wearing something I think ridiculous he looked, for a photo? No, no, no. See, here's the thing. I also am putting into what he talks about in that article, and I was not a fan. Of Tom Brady's hat provided shade for an entire African country <laughs> at that at that racetrack. I my whole point was I thought it was absolutely cool, and I was excited to You're see that. You're just happy the, the whole, Wolfpack is hanging out. Yeah, man. Like it, it was pretty cool. Like, just to see the, and also see, like, was it Instagram video of, uh, you know, the Wolfpack plus, um, Edelman Edelman was there and they were all dancing in the car. And, uh, I want to say, you said Garoppolo, it looks like Garoppolo's kind of like going, jumping all over them in the car and they're having having a good time. Did Did Robert Kraft, uh, trademark that yet? The Wolfpack? Not know, yet, but he likes the trademark. It might be trademarked yeah. by, uh, by, yeah, yeah. by um, because that the someone company, needs to yeah. make it. Is there a T-shirt that has like that the three of them? Because yeah. I would buy that. As soon as I saw Tom Brady's first Instagram post where he was like, "Hey, I don't know if you guys know this about me, but I'm kind of a loner." I was like, "What the fuck is this caption?" Or whatever. And then I got to the next line, like, and then I met, and then I met Jimmy, and I was like, "Wait a minute." Could it be? And I was like, wait, wait a minute. Like, could it, could well, yeah. I started saying, like, could it be? Is he quoting the hangover? Well, that's what I was going to say. They might have it trademarked. Yeah. I hangover. just want to know if I can buy a Jimmy G, Jacoby Brissett, Tom Brady t shirt we'll, we'll that says the Wolfpack. We'll I, also, I also think, like, to, to, play, to piggyback off of your point, that. Uh, that uh, Glenn Davis today. needs to be needs to be bathed and, and fed and mm-hmm. dressed. Yeah. He at least doesn't break his wrist getting out of the out of the tub. He didn't break his wrist getting out of the tub. We all know that. What did he? What was he doing then? Huh? He punched a wall. Well, it's obvious. Are but you sure he, about that? Yes. But he fell getting out of the tub, Dave. Right. What because did he they punch don't want a wall? Or getting out of the shower. Right. Huh? What did he punch a wall about? The same. Probably the same reason why he threw a water bottle through the TV. Did he punch a woman? Maybe. Probably deserved it. I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. All right. I'm, kidding. I'm all fired up. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Jesus. Uh, all right. So what you're not mad at it, Dave? I'm not mad at Area 21. I'm not mad at the that. whole I, show. I, I, I'm not I, mad at the whole show. You I should be mad fucking, at it because they invited Sam Cassell. I thought it was fucking awesome. I thought it was so good on on some real like real talk stuff. It was so cool to hear like Rondo telling stories. Dot came on. They bust each other's balls about their relationship and stuff. Like they laughed about it. Paul was like. Uh, they asked, which one's the craziest character of all of us did you have to coach? And they kind of stop. And then he's like, <laughs> Doc goes, all y'all were crazy. Like, I don't know. He's like, Eddie House. Like, he's not here. He's like, Eddie House is crazy. He's like, Tony was cheating everybody in the back of the airplane, robbing oh, everybody. Tony, he's Tony like, Allen. He's like, I remember Rondo was at the little kid's table or whatever. And Rondo's like, oh, come on, man. Like, my bankroll wasn't right. It was only my first or second year, Doc. He's like, come on, man. <laughs> and uh, they were laughing. And then Paul's like, oh, don't let me don't let me get you two started or whatever. He's like, I don't want you guys to fight here. You guys, you guys crossed that bridge. You mended that bridge. I don't want to break y'all up again or whatever. And, uh. And then it was really funny because as Doc was leaving, he says, hey, Paul, I got you a retirement gift. Stand up. They brought out 
uh, the wheelchair from the game against the Lakers where he where he, <laughs> he got hurt or whatever. And that, and Paul was like, fuck it, man, whatever. And he just like sat on that chair the whole <laughs> night. He did the rest of Area 21 sitting in the wheelchair. And uh, and then he says, uh, Doc's sitting there, and he's in Chicago. He's meeting with Tom Thibodeau for lunch, right? He's saying, I'm meeting up with Tibbs right now, actually. He's like, we're going to go get dinner. And uh, Glenn was like, you look like you ain't worried about nothing, right? Because Doc's got like a little 5 o'clock shadow. He's all relaxed. You can see the backdrop in Chicago. And he's like, hot seat my ass. They're talking about maybe firing you out there in L.A. You ain't worried about nothing, Doc. <laughs> and all of them are laughing like, go, just relax, man. Fuck it. You might not have a job next year. So just like, fuck it, whatever. And it was like, you ain't worried about nothing. It was awesome. It was so cool, the stories, everything. The show was really, really well done. And I'm fucking glad Ray wasn't there to wrap that up. Fuck Ray Allen. What do you got? Uh, my I'm not mad at it is Isaiah Thomas coming out in defense of Draymond Green of all people calling Kelly Olynyk the a dirty player. <laughs> yeah, Draymond Green, the human crotch kick, called Kelly Olynyk <laughs> called Kelly Olynyk a dirty player because another player on the Wizards bowled him over. Right. If if she wasn't dead, she'd be suing him for for sl- for destroying her gimmick. Who? China. The fucking oh yeah right the yeah. fucking low blow yeah because that's all he knows how to do yeah that's true I see I think Draymond's actually a really good basketball player I, but, I think he's an asshole but, but I know he's a dirty I know, player I know but he's a dirty player he is I, I, think I, I also player. think I also think Draymond Green is a good basketball player he's but he's a dirty player, he is a dirty player. so for him to he's start, the dirtiest player in the league right now so for him to start running his mouth that another player is dirty but I want to ask you real quick what do you think about professional athletes having a podcast while they're still a professional athlete. Um, what are they talking about? I know Kelly, two- like Kelly Olenek being a dirty no. Player. My point is like if 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 his podcast is about how like he does a hey this weekend I went to this restaurant and yeah. this is my review of the restaurant you know, yeah or hey I went to the movies with my kids and this is what we thought of the movies and it brings his kids in and they talk about it right that's one thing but to sit there I and talk about you your about other athletes no and if you're is that what about, he said it on it was a podcast on, it's a, he owns I thought podca- it was a Twitter no he I runs he a tweeted. no he runs a podcast called Dre Day and uh, that's <laughs> where he said it um, someone asked him they said yo what do you think about Kelly Olenek or what do you think about the Uber show on he said yo Olenek's dirty man. He's dirty. He's been dirty. He's like, and then he's like, the other guy who's on the show with him, whatever, was like, yo, what about that play to love, though? He's like, that's what I'm saying. He's like, yo, we, come on, we've been dirty, or whatever. And that's like, that's where it started. Was that Draymond Green? Was he in the studio? See, I'm again? doing, I'm like, my impression game right now is <laughs> pretty point. good. It's pretty good. I'm on fire. I do a really good Bill Belichick, but I'll save that for football season. <laughs> Another day. Yeah. You just <laughs> stare at the mic menacingly yeah, and just, don't say yeah. a word. <laughs> it's really good. It's really good. Next it's, question. Yeah. No, but yeah. Oh. Draymond Green doesn't have the right to talk call anyone dirty. Also, doesn't uh there are two Cavaliers that have a podcast too. Channing Fry and another person, I think. JJ Reddick has one too. I, the vertical. No really? way. Yeah, yeah. This is my thing. Stop having podcasts so us real podcasters can right. you know can thrive. Right. Because it's really hard. Shaq's to get... got a fucking podcast. That right. bastard. Well, you made enough money in your right. fucking yeah. life. It's really hard to get noticed when <laughs> people who are already famous are just out there right. talking into a microphone. Right. That's true. I love when uh, uh, one of my favorite podcasts in the world right now is, uh, uh, my God, Congratulations Podcast with Chris D'Elia, the comedian. Yeah. And there's a part where he started doing ads. Like, he's got MeUndies ads. He's got Squarespace. He's got all that stuff, right? So he's reading them. And he says, my fucking, he's like, I got to tell you something. I've had so many people tweet me like, yo, don't do ads. Your show sucks now. It sucks that you're doing ads. He's like, fuck you. What do you think I'm doing the podcast for? <laughs> he says, I'm not doing it for free. Go to work for free tomorrow. Do that. And then you can tell me not to read ads on the air. Whatever. He's like, what the fuck do you think I do this for? <laughs> he's like, I'm trying to back up the Brinks truck. <laughs> he's like, that's what I want. I want the Brinks truck backing up. Whatever. And uh, But it's true. I mean, you get all these celebrity podcasters and it's like, the fuck? You know what I mean? Like, How, how does anyone become of a celebrity podcast when all celebrities are podcasting. Like, it's yeah, tough. it's like, hey, uh, we put out a podcast. We have to watch the views grow mm-hmm. over time. And then a celebrity comes and plunks it down. It's like, oh, 50,000 views first. There you go. No problem. Oh, thanks. Check that out. That's and, cool. Oh, and they're getting subscribers. Yeah. <laughs> so they're getting ads. Awesome. You're doing ad reads on episode one? That's uh, all That's right. amazing. Yeah, yeah. I'm not yeah. even mad. <laughs> I'm, a, <laughs> I'm just impressed. <laughs> just, I like that. Uh, is that it for... Closing time? Yeah. yeah. We're not closing time. Let's go into closing time. It's slow 
closing time, nerds. Joe, what is your closing time? Uh, my closing time is still about the Patriots, I guess, in a weird way. Uh, Robert Kraft and the owner of the Miami Dolphins have both separately invested into OWL, which is the Overwatch League. Uh, in case you guys don't know, Overwatch is a competitive first-person shooter uh, by Blizzard, and they are doing a esports gaming league. They're launching it, and Robert Kraft decided to invest $20 million to buy a slot so that he could own a esports team in this league. And I think oh, uh, the Overwatch League is doing it a little differently than normal esports leagues. Normal esports leagues are like mouse companies or like computer companies sponsor teams and then they they don't really have like a central location. The teams can be comprised of people from all over the place and then they they duke it out or whatever. But the Overwatch League is going to have like uh, – because I can't think of a name on the spot. Let's just say like the Boston Bruins, but they're going to be playing Overwatch. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's going to be the Boston – Overwatch team, the right. San Antonio Overwatch team, and yep. they're going to have the teams based out of that, and they're going to do matches that way. That's awesome. So, Robert Kraft's all in. Yeah, twenty million dollar investment. He thinks it's going to be the next big thing. Miami cool. Dolphins guy is in separately. They're not together on this. Right. So, no conflict of interest there. Yeah. So maybe yeah. we'll see some Tom Brady Overwatch jerseys. I'll, I'll be honest. If I was a billionaire, I would not invest in that. I, I think gaming is going to be a big deal. I don't care. It's yeah. expected to be like a billion dollar industry, and in yeah. I think they said esports ads are going to reach over a billion dollars, but before twenty twenty or something like that. It's crazy. So another way for you to have to watch an ad before you do something. Twitch yeah. TV, man. Yeah, tw- yeah. Well, that's. Up. I mean, it's it's a such a growing market. It's crazy. No one I mean, it's not a bad investment. Anymore. Yeah, it's all. Yeah, it's all done digitally now so that's a it's a good investment i think it'll i don't know about the overwatch league itself the way i I think think about it good uh, the way i think about it robert Kraft is way more wealthier than i am right and it's because he does shit like this right it's true he got there pretty pretty much on his own i don't know the story behind he doesn't have a ton of a ton of financial backing before you know i mean like now he's in a really good shape but he Really worked his way up a lot. I know he was a fan. Right. Like he used to sit in the old stadium. I'm not sure exactly what the big ticket thing was that made him have the ability to buy the Patriots. I mean, I'm not sure how he got to that point. but He owns that cardboard thing a couple. Yeah, Rand Whitney. Yeah. Yeah, Rand Whitney. Yeah, he owns that. Yeah, the uh, paper. Yeah, yeah, paper cardboard. Yeah, that's where we get all of our master cases from. from, Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, So... Uh, yeah, I mean, he's just, he's got businesses all over the place. Was, I want to say he did like a lobster thing or something. I can't, but I could be wrong about that. Um, so yeah, what do you, what do you get? That sounds awesome, by the way. Yeah. I'm, I'm so like really in on that. We'll see where it goes. I don't think they have like a tele, they'll probably get a television deal or a Twitch deal or something I was going to say, like it's that. an interesting yeah. thing to read about. Well, now, I just wouldn't have You don't think it. it's, you, you said, I don't know if it's going to, Street Fighter is on television. They, on I TNT also, or TBS I don't have or cable, whatever, so I wouldn't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't either, but I know that they yeah, air right. it. Yeah, they, yeah. they they show Street Fighter matches on TV now. Right, they do uh, the Madden tournament online yeah. or on, on TV. And um, <clears throat> Counter Strike had the E League, which was on TNT. Yeah, last or TBS, one of the two. And Rocket League is is one too, where they're starting to do that. Where there's the you know the the. Yeah. the Esports, soccer, or yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's another esports. So game. it's it's starting, and they've been project predicting this for a long time. It looks mm-hmm. like it's finally coming to pass. That's awesome, and uh, hopefully it'll be by the summer, so we don't have to just talk Red Sox. Yeah, <laughs> so we could do we mm-hmm. could do the big three basketball league. You guys want to get into Dota? <laughs> just, yeah. We could do the big three basketball league, right? Ice cubes. Oh yeah, and then we could do uh, some some e games. Do some of that. Yeah. This podcast is about to change. Yeah. <laughs> about to turn inside out. Welcome to the Big Three Basketball <laughs> League cast. Hey, how about Allen Iverson? He used to be good. Yeah. Still good. Yeah, he's not bad. He's what? real good when he plays 70-year-old guys. Right. Yeah. What do you got for yours? What's your closing time? Mine is uh, I went and saw um, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Wow. <laughs> Joe, Joe, Joe has not heard it or has not seen the movie. Neither of you. I have not. 
Yeah. I don't care if you ruin it. Yeah. I uh, do he's, care. He's, I'm going to watch it. He's on spoiler alert right now. <laughs> yeah. um, How many lines of dialogue does Vin Diesel have? Well, he just says, I am Groot. Well, yeah, he's right. baby Groot. Spoil, you spoiled the whole thing. Right? <laughs> he's baby Groot. <laughs> He does. He does. Vin Diesel do baby. He Groot? does. Well, he does the voice for Groot, and then he does the voice for Baby Groot. He as does. Well. Do, yeah. yeah. Okay. They, they, he just he says also. And they pitch shifted. He up. also was in uh, Iron Giant. Like he's been in a lot. He mm-hmm. for a guy that like he's quote unquote well known as a on the screen actor. Mm-hmm. He's a well known voice, voice actor, actor as well. Yeah, he's like in that. He's in that like secret secret like a uh, market of voice actors. Yeah. Where you're just that like, you don't know. Oh, shit, I didn't know he was in that. Yeah. Oh, shit, I know he's in that. I want the job of Groot. It's literally one am, line. You say one line yeah, over and over again. But great. you have to say it with a, you know, certain emotion. I would I would I would drop an I am Gru right now, Gru? but I feel like I'm, <laughs> yeah. not bad. Not bad. I told Gru, you I could have it. Gru's in the studio. But uh no, I, I liked it. Um I would say it's on that second tier of Marvel movies for me. Worse than the first one? Oh, I, I wouldn't say it's worse, but I want to say the the first one was better. Julie, you like the first one better? Um, yeah, and there's a there's an there's I want to say this one. Everyone else out of the Guardians are funnier than uh, Star Lord. Really? P- yeah, he he plays more serious, more of a serious role in this movie. I have kind of a man crush on Chris. On Chris, Chris Pratt. Pratt. Yeah. yeah. No, he 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 takes off his shirt in the movie, and I'm like. Fuck you, man. You used to be Andy. Well, I don't mean, what right, the hell? No, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. really have like a sexual attraction to him. Sure. But he makes me laugh. No, he's funny. I don't, and he's good looking. He I makes kinda, you laugh. I think I like him with Come a shirt on. on, though. I don't think I've ever seen him with a shirt <laughs> off. So maybe there's... You'll see it. You'll and see then you it. Might Maybe I'll know. pitch a tent in the spoiler, theater. I don't spoiler know. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Maybe spoiler alert. He takes tighter. his shirt off. Chris, yeah, Chris Brown. Topless. <laughs> Topless. Um, no, just one emotion. There's a couple emotional moments in the in the, in the the movie. I, I would say... Uh, in the past probably year or so when I see things that remind me of certain people and certain things bring out certain emotions in me and it uh, hit me on a couple spots. A couple levels, when, yeah. And that, that I take those moments and think mm-hmm. they're great and there's certain parts of the movie that I'm like, eh. Yeah. And it's not that it was bad. I just... Is the I, soundtrack I, better? I, no, is, I've heard the soundtrack worse. is good it's worse. In the it's first one. Worse, yeah. No, it's worse. This one. That's what this heard. one. It's more. Um, I would say the the last one was seventies music, but it was seventies hits. Yeah. This is a. There's a couple songs that you're like, oh yeah. Fine, oh, I this know. is the B sides. This. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that they also placated into the whole thing about it more. Like they kind of forced it down your throat. Like there's a scene. Where uh, the the what's the name the fox or whatever is rocket his, raccoon rocket, yeah the raccoon, raccoon. Kind of rocket yeah he's trying to say oh no like give me the tape player back like oh no give it and then it's like I was listening to the dork podcast and they were talking about that we're like okay he just, doesn't we, know what you're talking we about. get it you just want to play the song yeah Let's just play the song like you don't have to do this whole thing about oh no I want the tape player I want the whatever and then it's like no just fucking play it just play the song it's a soundtrack you don't we don't need the tape player you know what I mean you can play it whatever you want it's a it's kind of a, a it seems forced. Bradley like the, like the soundtrack seems forced. I mean, there's certain parts. I'll say this: like Rocket's a badass mm-hmm. in the movie, and yeah, I mean, of course, you know he is. But this one, he's by, like the situation. He's by himself, and he just takes out like fifty people. Yeah, yeah because I thought he was kind of underutilized in the first one. He's. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say. I, th- I want to say this movie. I mean, they still save the galaxy, so right. they still keep that mantra. Um, but you know, it is what it is. I. I I still love it. I still like the fact that they're making stuff still better than anything that fucking DC is putting out mm-hmm. next month. Uh, I want to say probably in two weeks, three weeks. Um, Wonder Woman comes out, so we'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold my full thought on DC. How do you movies. feel about the Wonder Woman casting? Do you like her as Wonder Woman? I think what I've seen of uh, previews of it, it looks good. But a lot of we'll people see. complained about her being cast because she wasn't big enough. Yeah, she's not big. She's very yeah. Well, I, you're not going to find a girl like China that's she, also yeah. attractive. Wonder, Wonder Woman's like Amazonian, isn't she? Well, she is. Yeah. She's yeah. Like, yeah. <coughs> that's interesting. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So, uh, Mr. Mr. Dave, mine is I, I've talked about the show before on here, and we're at the the mid season point of the final season. Of the leftovers to me, it's the best show on television. Oh, the show about the turkey sandwich in my fridge. Yes, right. Yeah, that it's about the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. it's about the yeah, the turkey sandwich. Yep. Um, 
Uh, it's just a show about a show about Thanksgiving leftovers. That's it's, it. I put, I put a uh, GoPro in my fridge, <laughs> pointed directly at a turkey sandwich, <laughs> and, and you can watch the mold. It's you can watch riveting. the mold grow on it. It's pretty it riveting there. television. The, t- the fridge opens up, and you see me like reach for stuff. <laughs> oh, is that turkey sandwich it's, still in here? Oh, it's Joe. Hey, there's Joe. Close so, it. It's so, what good. did you actually think of it? Oh man. So, and it, we've had a couple character development episodes, and now this is the first time where it kind of was like back to the story and. Oh my fucking god! The show is perfect. It is so good. Boo! I know, all right. Boo! Aaron has been catching up on the show, and th- is that a boo for the show? It sounds like he's not episode? a fan. No, nah, no. I hate. I hate that you hate that show so much. I hate it. Is, is right. the is the honeymoon over, Dave? <sighs> is the romance done? Now, <laughs> you have to watch a stupid show now. Yeah, you do. You have to. Yeah, now you do. You have to. And I then, tell every And then you can both sit here and look at me and tell me I'm an asshole, but yeah. that's okay. Go home and watch the first episode tonight. I don't, you know, hey, I might not like it. Maybe I'm on Team Eric. <laughs> it's, he, believe, he was with you with Dwight Howard. I'm telling you. Yeah. Dwight Howard sucks. No, Dwight Howard does suck. I'm, I'm there. He's just a bigger, I just think he better dumped. version of uh, Glenn Davis. I just think that he dunked it. <laughs> that's all. He didn't dunk. Jesus. Great review, subscribe. <laughs>